Okay, okay folks, folks here, here, if you're listening, you might as well get started. Get started. Uh, uh, I want, I to, want introduce to introduce the, the uh, 2017 Pro Test League. It's the first it's round. This is the San Diego, Diego Surfers, Surfers broadcaster, John Watson, Watson international master John Watson. Watson. The game will be starting shortly. Let me outline who's playing here. Uh, we have uh, uh, Georg uh, Mark- uh, the, the Seattle Sluggers are playing the San Diego, San Diego Surfers, Surfers today. today. And, and we should, and have, should have, have a really good match. match. We're, looking We're looking forward to, to uh, a first board between Georg Margus Velashvili versus Alexei Dreyev. Uh, second board is Victor Mikhailevsky versus Melik Zetkachyan. Uh, third board is Michael Brown versus Georg Orlov. And the fourth board is Craig Hilby versus Bruce Hagelin. So, so um, um, this, this is, a is a very interesting, interesting new, new format, format because everyone, everyone plays everyone, everyone. so the top, so the top boards, boards just don't play the other top, top boards. boards. They, they, everybody, everybody plays, plays everyone, everyone in a series, series of 15-minute uh, matches, matches with a two-second two increment. increment. So this, so this is going to be a very exciting format. Things, things will move really fast. fast. We're, We're not going to do a lot of analysis, but maybe a little bit, throwing a little bit of hints here and there about what's going on. And just basically this is sort of a sporting event. Uh, format, uh, format with, with um, really, really pretty, pretty fast, fast time, time control, control for people at this time, at this level. level. So, so, but I've uh, noticed, noticed already watching, watching today that there's some incredibly high quality, high quality matches, matches anyway, even at this uh, time, time control. control. Uh, uh, this, this, we now have, have a tremendous, tremendous number, number of teams, teams of just 40 teams, teams worldwide. worldwide. So, so the, the, what used to be the United States Chess League has turned into a worldwide league, the professional chess league, and what we, what found we found is that, is that, uh, that, uh, that people, people from all over, some, some of the top players of the world, world are playing, so that, so that will be of interest, interest to see them. them. Um, there's, there's 48, 48 teams, actually, actually, with 400, 400 players, players, over 100 grandmasters grand are playing this year, this year. And, and we have we teams from, teams from all, all, every, every, almost every continent. continent. There are actually three African teams, there are two Asian teams, there are two South American teams. Most of the teams are from the United States or Europe. There are 20 teams from the United States, 16 from Europe. There are four from, from India, India, which is, of course, course an incredibly, incredibly strong, strong chess, chess country. country. So this so is going to be really fun to see what's going, what's going on. on. I'm, uh, I'm uh, in the middle, in the middle of, following of following our games, games our, our players, players from, from our, our team. team. And, and those players, those players are Alexei Dreyev, let's, let's talk about, about him. him. That's Big Rock 3069. Uh, Alex Kachyan is GM Melik. Michael, Michael Brown, Brown is uh, Michael, Michael QD5. Q-D5. Uh, Q2D5. And, and Craig, Craig Hilby is the nom nom, nom, nom factor. factor. Um, Alex Dreyev was, was the under, under, world, world under 16 champion, champion in 1934 and, and the world junior, junior European, European junior, junior champion. champion. He's a very, He's a very strong grandmaster. He's actually qualified, qualified for the candidate cycle. cycle. So he's an elite world, world, world level, level player. player. He lost a match. In the candidates to uh, uh, none other than, than, none other than, than Vishnu of Anand. Anand. And, and uh, uh, he also was in several, in several of the knockout, knockout tournaments, tournaments for the World, world FIDE World, world Chess Championship, championship uh, uh, in the, the uh, uh, late, late 1990s, 1990s and early 2000s. 2000s. Um, uh, uh, Alexei Kachin is a grandmaster of Armenian origin who lives in Los Angeles. He played in the Chess Olympiad of 1996. He's very well known as a coach and he was actually the first coach of Levon Romania. Um, then on top of that, we have, we have uh, Michael, Michael Brown, Brown, who is who is IAM. He was the 2015 Southern, Southern California, California champion. champion. He's young. And, and uh, uh, Craig Hillsby is, 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 is an FM master. He's very young. young. Uh, uh, he, he won, won the Southern, Southern California, California State, State High School Championship. But he already, but he already has, has two IAM numbers. He's a very promising young player. Now let's see what we've got involved this first Week. week I'm, I'm going to going have to just get, just organized, get organized and see how, see how this works. works. And we're relaying, relaying these games from chess.com. Chess. Dot dot com. Com. And, and I don't, I don't yet, yet see, see our games, our games listed, listed at, 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 having, having come, come up. up. So, so we'll, so see, we'll when see when they, they start. start. I think they should, they should have started. started. Uh, I don't, I don't see them on here. I am following the... The players. the players. Let me just, Let me try, just this try this for a second. second. Make sure, Make sure that, that we get uh, uh, that we don't, that we don't miss any games here. here. Uh, I'm, not I'm not seeing, seeing our, games, our games, but they really, but they really should have started, started by this point, point I, believe. I believe. So maybe, so maybe let, let me check, check that out. out. And 
see see what's what's going going on on for a second. second. Okay. Okay. There are are games games going going on, of course, course, from from the league. league. Uh, all the, all the match, first, first matches are today, today first, first round matches, matches. so there's all sorts of sex going on. There was one game where someone could have gotten, gotten a checkmate, checkmate by, by promoting, promoting East, East to a knight, knight, but because, because they, had they had the automatic, automatic queen, queen promotion, promotion on, on, we weren't, weren't able, able to deliver the checkmate, so that was a funny incident that happened. happened. Um, the, the perils, perils of on chess. chess. So, so let, let me just take a look at this, because it seems to me these games probably should have started at this point. A second. Okay, I've, okay, got, I've word got word that there's, that there's an, an echo, echo here on the on broadcast. broadcast. Um, um, let, me let me see if I can do anything, anything about that. that. Let me lower, let me lower the, the volume, volume a little bit. bit. That might help. help. And, and um, um, I can actually can listen, listen to this myself for a second. What have we got going on here? here? Our game should be starting very soon. I actually thought it was 640. It's actually 650. So, my time. Which would be 9.50 Eastern time. time. Yeah, I, don't I don't see, see that, that these games, games have, have appeared, appeared yet, yet, so, so let's, let's see. see. Oh, here, oh, we, here go. we go. Okay, okay so, there's so there's the Alexa, Alexa Green. Green. Yeah, I, hope I hope you can, can see, see that, that now. now. Uh, uh, Alexa Green is white uh, against uh, uh, Georgi Margolashvili. And it's a Fianchetto game. Four of white. white. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Margaret Freely. Ah, ah, okay, now we got another game up. Um, Michael, Michael Brown, Brown is playing, playing someone who was not listed, not listed on, on my list. list. Uh, so, it's so it's not, not the uh, people, uh, I people I thought on our team, it's the same people. There's the Malik. Kachan. And Michael Brown is playing. There we go. Okay, so let me. Just shift, shift from one to another, another, and there's Melek playing. He is playing Mikol, as, as, as expected. Okay, so, okay, so, so since nothing's happening, happening on that game, game, let me just let me move, move over, over to the next, the next game. game. Michael Brown is playing 2K, 2K Tango. Tango. Two Nights Tango, 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 that's a short short, but I don't know who that is. It's not the person who was announced, as far as I can make out. So I'm not quite sure who that is on the Seattle team. That's a Queen's Gambit with... The move of 96 is very strange, strange move for black. For black. So already so is strange thing. Michael Brown's Brown playing sort of normal moves. moves. The, the move 96 is usually in the Queen's game. Queen's game. We'll, we'll stick with this game for a second, second. So, so we can we talk, talk about, about it. it. And, and uh, uh, okay, the, the bishops, bishops are going off. That gives maybe black a chance to get more active. The knight really isn't supposed to be on c6. So I think now it would be very safe to just simply play. Okay, Rook C1's a good move. Threaten c takes d5 maybe. With a weak position advantage. advantage. We'll see, see what happens, what happens there. there. Okay, okay, so this, this is just a game black castle, castle, so maybe now just bishop d3 and I say save, or c takes d5. Are both interesting moves. The knight on c6 blocks black c pawn, so this is the red red gives white a tiny advantage. But let me just assume that nothing much is going to happen immediately in that game. Let's go to the next game. And, and this, this is, is um, 
Craig, Craig Hilby, Hilby is, is playing, playing White. White. This, this was, was looks like it was a Nidorf Sicilian. Sicilian. Yes, it was yes, a Nidorf Sicilian, Sicilian and, and very standard, standard kind of position of set that after e5-5 by knight f3 instead of knight b3. Still, Still a fairly popular, popular idea. Sometimes, sometimes white plays knight d2 and tries to play for bishop c4 or knight c4 in a position, position like this. Like this. I don't know the actual name of the black player. I, I seem to have gotten the names of the Seattle players wrong. Uh, so I'm not sure. Originally I thought that... Let's just see. That Craig was going to play Bryce uh, Tylon. Tiglon. There we go, Knight D2, that's, that's kind of what I expected. Well, we'll just do a San, San Diego point of view, because we definitely know who's playing from, from San Diego's point of view. Okay, okay black, black stops the Knight C4 by counterattacking the e pawn. Now a move like F3 would be very sort of a standard idea. I doubt if White would want to take that Knight on C5 yet, but we may do so later. So I would expect a move like probably like F3. Let's just keep looking here. Mikhailovsky here playing. Malik. Malik. Uh, that's Malik. Uh, our, our, our player, player Malik Kachan, is, is black. And yeah, that's, that's an English opening, opening, a very standard English opening. opening. It's, it's the reverse dragon. dragon. But, but often, often the reverse dragon, dragon black, black will play, will not play rookie 8 in bishop e7. This is not always considered the very best line. Usually black plays bishop e6, 6, a5, and after b5, knight b4. So this is a little unusual. I used to like playing this position this white, actually. I don't know about knight d2, but after, after, after bishop d2, for example, for example, I used to like to play this, but I'm sure both sides know what they're doing, doing very much so. Uh, I always enjoy this business as well, the sort of re a re really, really clear reverse Sicilian, Sicilian, Sicilian where black, black isn't, isn't playing particularly aggressively. And so that's not a heck of a lot of that in there yet, let's just kind of keep moving here. Nobody's using a lot of time in the open, which is good. Okay, let's go back to that game. With, with um, um, Margolash Margo Margo versus Dreyev. Dreyev is black. Alexei Dreyev here. here. And yeah, that's, that's a kind of, um, of um, Fianchetto opening, 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 kind of almost like a ready opening. It's turned into something looking, looking sort of halfway between a ready and a Kavalon. A Kavalon white point would be on D4. So it's an English opening. It's a sort of straight English opening, but with ready opening ideas, which is to Fianchetto and then play knight A3, take C4. And I'm yeah, sure this position has come up on, on over the board, board before, before. Uh, but it's but not it's a not particularly, particularly regular, regular or, 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 or important or critical opening. So, so what we've what seen, we've seen so, far so far is nobody's playing really critical openings, and that kind of makes sense in an important match, match with a limited time. time. These are all very safe moves, very professional moves. And what White's trying to do is take over the center. This should be two, that would be a beautiful one diagonal. Now, he is he allowing is black, black to move the knight and the tempo on the rook on a one, but I don't think the knight can go anywhere in particular. Uh, uh, now, black moves the knight into play, play possibly thinking about knight b4. So, so uh, to d5, for example. For example. So, so, I'd say so not a lot of stuff. There it is. There's knight d4. Maybe black will have some idea playing bishop f5 at the right point. Also, also, it's just, just move a5, a5 with the idea of a4, a4 is, a, is a thing here. But not a lot going on. Let's, let's keep going. going. And so we don't miss anything exciting on one of these games. games. Here's Michael, Michael Brown's, Brown's game again. again. As white. Ah, he's in a position of advantage. Look at that, that queen side. That's a really nice position for white. We see superficially. We have even material, but white has total control over that c5 square and dark square. He has control over e5, black black play e5. Black's bishop, bishop is, is not, not very good, good although, although a bishop on b7, b7 isn't bad. bad. The pawn, the pawn on b5, b5 is hanging. I'm not sure if that could have been taken, actually, actually but, but this is safe. White can consider attacking with e4, followed, followed by maybe rook, rook h5, h5 by, followed by knight h5, e5. e5. Right now, e4, e4 is, is a big move. That will drive White's black knight away from the center. And temporarily, it's really like the B pawn is hanging. Okay, that's a good move because that's E4, at least the rook can't stand over the king's side. Nevertheless, you have to like White's position. You can triple on the C file at some point. I'm not sure why Black would be playing this way. So I think I feel good about White's prospects here. I guess having that knight on C6 did turn out to be a bit of a problem. We can even go back and take a quick look at that. 
Uh, how this works? A black played with knight d4, and tried to swing the knight back to d5, but that really didn't work very well, did it? Okay, so the idea is if rook take b5, it happened now, there's bishop a6, and that would stop um, white from casting, so that would be silly. So white just plays normal, and the same thing here, rook takes b5 is still bad because of bishop a6 swing in exchange. However, position, white just stands beautifully here. Uh, there are several, several ways to play this. So e4, of course, or just, or just slowly, slowly build up on the c file. Queen d2 is an interesting move. With the idea of rook fc1, knight e5 is always a move. So this, so this, this game, uh, I think black, black has some positional problems. problems. Okay, black, black to do co back to the cockshelling game. Black stands solidly, but I like white. White has all the standard ideas of putting your knight on c5, maybe putting your knight on e4, one knight on e4, and the other knight on c5 looks very strong. Uh, we'll see what happens there. Black played f6 to, to make sure that the e pawn is never hanging. And also, a move like queen f7 can be handy to hit the b3 square. In fact, it's his move now. He could kill queen, queen f7 right now, hitting the b3 square. And then maybe knight c5 would follow. It's not clear. Uh, the normal move for black would probably be, well, there's two possibilities. One is a sort of an a5 idea, followed by knight d4 and a4. The other idea would be simply rook a D1, D1, or, or even, even rook AD8, or even rook B8, just to be very careful about a knight coming to C5 and winning that B pawn. I like white offhand positioning. If he gets white one more move, he certainly stands very well. But maybe black has a good counterattacking idea here. Knight D4 is possible, because even though the B pawn seems to hang, the knight on B3 is hanging. Um, he really he has, has to do something about knight E4, C5. That's going to be incredibly strong for white, because he can follow with knight takes B7. And Bishop takes c6, those kinds of moves. moves. So, uh, this, is this is a key, key move. move. I would think... Ah, oh, so he goes so for the a5 idea. idea. That's, That's obviously, obviously a very reasonable move. move. It attacks b4 twice. twice. I almost, almost wonder if white, white can, can ignore that and play knight e4, and if a takes b5, then knight c5. That might be very strong. Maybe after knight e4, he plays bishop takes b3, but then that's check, so that's not true. Sorry. So, so I wonder, I wonder about, about the move knight e4 at this point. Looks, looks like a very like interesting move. move. The move, move b5 may look natural, look natural to everybody, but after all, after knight d4, d4 then that knight on b3 is attacked, is attacked and, and the c5 outpost, outpost is gone. gone. Uh, the black's uh, controlling, controlling c5 at that point. point. So, that so that position may not be quite as attractive. Also, that would threaten the pawn on b5. So the move b5 is not particularly attractive to me. I would say the move knight e4 can get away with it tactically, because it threatens knight c5 and then knight e7. So, so losing that beep on will not, should not, not be a major factor in a position like that, unless I'm missing something. something. And of course, of course that's, that's possible with this time, time control. control. Black's uh, spent quite a bit of time doing that. He's a couple minutes behind, nothing special, but it's interesting that he thought carefully about making that A5 move. Okay, just getting warm up here, folks. I'm not used to this myself. I'm sure you're not used to following four games at once at this kind of speed. Uh, so, so let's, let's go, go back, back and see what's, what's going, going on in this game. game. The one, here we go. Um, okay, so this is the Craig Hill game, game with, with white. white. Whoa, Whoa, very, very aggressive, B4. B4. Now that's, that's a double-edged move because the knight on C3 hangs, but he's, but he's got, got very concrete, concrete ideas. ideas. He wants to get the knight out of the center. This is a very interesting move. I'm a little surprised at this move. I guess black's debating between knight E6 and knight D7. Um, knight e6 has the advantage that black and you play knight f4. Okay, okay, so here's another move he's thinking about. <laughs> he was thinking about, and he played, which is knight e3. Now, I would think that white would want to capture that knight. Uh, possibly would win, right? Okay, one second, folks. Hello? on in the background so I could check to see if it was working but there's no but, but there's no sound from that computer but I'll, I'll, I'll give that a try sure okay okay
Okay, I've been informed that my audio is still giving some problems here. I'm going to try to get rid of a few windows and see if that does any good. I might get rid of everything here on this computer. Um, hopefully that might make a positive difference. Okay, so what's going on here? Uh, maybe, maybe I should check, check and see. Let me say some things, things and I'll go check and see how the audio is done. My apologies. This is our first week. I think these things, these things are almost bound to happen. And, and we'll get it together by next week. We did test it. it. The sound was okay. But um, um, at this point, we're having some problems with it. And our my apologies. So, um, okay. So, okay, so what's he thinking? He's thinking about moves like knight b3, queen takes c3, and then maybe white could play something like bishop d2, for example. And then protect his e pawn. Uh, what else what can else you consider, consider in this position? This position? Um, uh, obviously, obviously, C takes B, and queen, queen takes C3, three, and then see what you can do in that position. position. The queen's a little bit trapped in that position, so I would say C takes D3, knight takes C3. You have to have at least, least consider moves like knight C4. Right now, the E pawn would be hiding, but that might even be okay. It's very scary. The queen's very stuck in the corner there. So, this is a very interesting tactical position. Three seconds. Yeah. Oh, I've got I've got that covered. Oh, it says has joined the chat. Has joined the chat, but I don't see any actual chat. Let me. Um, oh, maybe that's the problem. I see, I see where people say they joined the chat, but I don't see actual chats. Do you do you say? Okay, but I, oh, but see, I turned off the broadcast because of that. I mean, that's why I can turn it back on. I can go back to the broadcast. Apparently nothing's better now. Sure. Okay. Okay, okay. Okay, okay, folks, so a technical, technical break. break. I, think I think I'll go, I'll go try, try to get, get to the broadcast, broadcast itself and take, and a, take look a look because, because apparently, apparently you guys are helping me with the chat. chat. And, and uh, that's, uh, that's really, really a good, a good idea. idea. Let, Let me, me um, go there. Actually I actually got, got rid of the broadcast. broadcast. It might be causing me some problems. problems. Okay. okay. And let me go ahead. Ten watching. There's the, There's chat. the chat. Aha. Aha. Okay. okay, people okay. are talking, talking to each other. Each other. Keaton, Keaton and Rich. Rich. And, and Travis. Travis. Don't, watch Don't watch the broadcast, broadcast and while broadcasting, you will echo. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, but there's, but no there's no feedback, feedback coming because I don't have the sound on on the broadcast. broadcast. And actually, and actually I, just I just turned it off, off but now I just turned it on again for the first time so I can look at the chat channel. But there should be no echo coming because there's no... Yes, exactly. Yes, exactly. The replay, the replay is, muted. is muted. So everything, so everything I, have I have is muted. Is muted. Oh, my, oh, my speakers, speakers are all are muted. muted. Well, actually, actually, on the on other computer, 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 it's not, it's not quite, quite completely, completely muted, muted, so let me so do, do that. that. Is that any is that better? better? Is anybody getting anything, anything better out of this? You need to replay on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, it's been it's been muted. In fact, I turned the entire replay off just so that just, just so, so that, that I wouldn't get any, get any sound. sound. So, so there's, there's something, something else going, going on. on. Tell me, keep, keep giving me chats, chats now. I've gotten back, back onto the broadcast, broadcast which, I which I think is safe enough. This is not better still echo. Well, now that's, well, interesting, that's interesting because, because Keaton, Keaton, our team captain, who's on there, and I tested this earlier, and somehow we didn't end up with an echo. Let me, Let me take, take all the sound off, off on all, all the computers. Let me see. It's not it's my headphone, headphone, I don't think. think. It's something, something about, about chess.com. Chess. 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 
I mean, I mean the way the that the broadcast, broadcast contest, contest comes, comes fall forward. Hmm. hmm. Well, well, turned, well, turned off absolutely, absolutely everything except, except for this, this chat, chat, and there's and no there's sound coming from there. there. And, and the chess.com just just board that I'm doing the broadcast from. Look at three, by the way. What an interesting move. We're missing some exciting names because of technical issues. Well, that's actually very interesting. Very interesting. I, like I like that move. He spent quite, quite a long, long time on it, didn't he? Craig did. But the idea, of course, is his knight takes, queen takes, white maintains his space advantage. And, uh, and uh, if queen takes c3, then the other takes, rook takes b3, and then white's, and white's got a nice initiative, initiative coming. coming. So, so probably you'll see knight takes d2, I would imagine. imagine. But, but that's, that's not clear. There's quite, quite, quite a few options, options here. here. Um, okay, let's see. I want to try your regular mic instead of the headphones. That, unfortunately, regular mic isn't really... What I'll do, let me disconnect the headphones for a second. And let them let run on their power. power. Maybe that yeah, helps. Is that, is that any better? better? You can manually well, adjust your mic sensitivity. Yeah, but, yeah, but, I, but, but I've, I've had, had, I've had no problems, problems with this mic sensitivity for the last, for the last uh, you know, year. year with these, with these, with these headsets, so that seems, seems unlikely. unlikely. Uh, yeah, yeah, how would I check that? that? And is and it still, still going, going bad? bad? I guess it's still, still going, going bad. bad? I can, I switch, can switch my channels. I don't, don't think that would be much good. good. The regular mic on, mic on the computer, computer I don't think even exists. That would have, have, have to switch to my laptop for that. that. Hmm. Okay, okay so, so I guess, I guess okay, okay, it's no better right now. now. What about the sensitivity of it? Oh, I can move the microphone away further. Let me try that. Okay, now the microphone's a little further away. Does that help a little bit? Is that, is that, okay, that should be softer, if nothing else. So queen takes c3, rook takes b3 happened. Oh, better. Well, so somehow it was just too loud, I guess. So maybe that was microphone sensitivity. Thank you. Whoever said that seems to have had a point. Well, I'll move it even further away. Okay, that's even further away. Way better. Okay, so basically I was too close to the microphone, which is odd because it was the standard distance that I do all my broadcasts with for the last couple of years, but <laughs> we, we won't worry about that. Maybe it has something to do with the fact that since I'm using this program, you know, the mic is picking up the sound differently. Um, okay, I'm surprised you can even hear me. It's, I've got it bent way away from my, uh, my mouth here. But that's fine. Uh, keep telling me how it's going. Okay, so let's get back to the games. So this game is very exciting. Oh, Black broke through with... Um, this move A5 is interesting. It has ideas of bishop B6. On the other hand, it did allow this move D5. So Black, White could have played something like, I suppose... Um, well, it's a good question. What could White have played? I mean, even C4 was conceivable, I guess. Very odd kind of move, because there are a lot of weaknesses there. But this D5 move, if it works, is a very good freeing move. I suspect we'll see Bishop b6 just to force uh, black to see where black's going try and try and see where black's headed for and also stop there we go bishop b6 is played but that doesn't mean black's position isn't sound here now what are the options here things like rook d3 is an interesting move um capturing followed by things like mm, bishop c4 bishop f3 so a lot of things going on here let's check some of the other games because we haven't seen them for quite a while Okay, here we go with, um, well, a lot has happened here. So after that move, let's go back for just a second real quick and see if we can see what happened here. After the a5 move, uh, no, he did play b5. I was surprised at that b5 move. I wanted him to play otherwise. Whoops. So b5, knight d4, captures. So white's still covering that c5 square, but black's well centralized. Okay, let's catch up to the, what, we, what we've got right now. Um, and this is the position we have right now. Things are happening fast here. Okay, what does this look like, folks? Um, white's knight is probably better than dad's, but black's bishop, but the d3 pawn is hanging, and there might even be a move, for example, on a move like rook c3, you lose the knight on e4. So it could be that white's going to lose that d pawn. Uh, if he does, 
black will probably lose the c-pawn, so that's going to be some sort of trade-off. It's now white's move, and uh, I don't know what people think. By the way, I'm going to watch this chat a little, so if you've got some, um, if you've got, oh, Michael's game is about over. Let's check that out. Let me go back there. Oh, uh, here we go. Let's check that out. Wow. You forget how fast we wasted too much time on the technical issues. So that's the position. White won. Uh, terrific. Okay, let's see this. White won. Oh, that was the game that was looking so bad in the opening. Knight d5. Uh, he did play e4. And they, oh, and started a big attack. Total domination of the position here, it looks like. Even that ending would have been good, but this is more impressive. The king is horribly weak. And it can be rook takes check. Oh, and then probably something like rook c6 winning a piece. Is that right? Oh, no, rook b7. Okay, so he's hanging out for a little while. White controls all the squares, though. Now rook f7 is a huge move. And f4. And king up threatening g3. Beautiful. And I imagine that's the resigns. Wonderful game. Beautiful game. Oh, boy. That's great. Um, super. So that's one win for, the, for San Diego, for the surfers. And that's, that's really nice. And uh, by the way, someone might tell me who 2K Tango is. That, that isn't the name that I got before the match started, so I'm um, a little confused by that. But um, and, and in fact, you can do that with all these people, except we know we know Mark Vela 90. Um, let's look at this game, by the way. Let's look at Dreyev's game. What do we have here? We have... Okay, here we go. This ready-like game. Let's, this is about where we left it. Okay, so he did play a5. White has a little more in the center. White has a central majority, but black has very active pieces. I like, I still like white's game. Anytime you win the center, it's nice. You feel like white has a small advantage here. Of course, as a San Diego supporter, I'm we're rooting for black here, aren't we? Whoa, well now there's quite a move. Uh, aiming at the king's side, putting those bishops vis-a-vis -vis on, um, on the long diagonal, and if black takes twice on um, d5, there's the e7 pawn is going to hang. No, actually, he's doing it with knight takes. Okay, so this is the position. Uh, black's temporarily a pawn ahead, but the king's exposed and the d-pawn fell, so it looks very good for white temporarily because there's moves like um, maybe queen b2 check is an idea, queen e7 is an idea. There's a lot of things going on here. Just On the other hand, white's bishop on g2 is really poor, so maybe it's not such an awful position. Now he's thinking about uh, making Luft, but also possibly putting a uh, bishop on h3 at some point. King h2, for example, might be a move. He's also thinking about h5, h6, just threatening mate and, and loosening up uh, the black's position. Ah, simplify. I think black's happy to simplify and centralize. So this is looking much better for black all of a sudden. Uh, what looked like there might be a very strong attack now looks like just sort of an even game. Okay, I don't know who's better here, but it looks very, it's even in material, it's simplified, and uh, so maybe not that much is happening. There is an idea of f4 and bishop takes b7, I guess, but you know, that rook's coming down to d2 also. So, um, and, and there's also just knight c6 as a response. So this is where we are now. It looks to me like things have gotten a lot more even. I don't know what anybody thinks about this. Oh, that is Orloff. I had Orloff's uh, name. I guess when I looked it up on uh, chess.com, I misunderstood. I thought it was Orloff. Okay, so that's very interesting. So we do have the original matchups that I thought we had. Good. So what I said about this, the uh, Seattle players still still follows. Okay. Okay. So Michael beat Orloff, uh, Craig Hilby, and Bruce Bruce, and we're now we're looking at the Drev game. This is um, Margulashvili. Boy, that simplified dramatically. I'm really glad to see that Black uh, sort of held on here. Interesting. I don't know what Keaton thinks about this ending. Why would like to play rook b5 and put pressure on that long diagonal? But look at that. Yeah, rook d3. It seems to me black is plenty active here. Maybe Keaton wants to make a comment about this ending. Black looks worse. I'm not so sure. Aha! A North County man coming. This is great. Okay, so let's just slow down here for a moment. Um, well, rook, rook b3 is happening, isn't it? And then rook a5, I guess. Looks, I would think draw. It's a rook ending, right? 
probably Drosh. That's just my first instinct. Both sides have a pass pawn. Nothing much happening. Probably a draw. Um, a, a very well played game, it looks like. Now let me see. What do we have? We have. Um, We have Craig Hilby here, and playing uh, Br Bryce Tidelon. And what's happened there? We might want to go back and take a quick look at that. All those technical problems sort of got us way behind. Um, we were roughly at this point. Uh, White took, played knight c4. Let's just quickly zoom through these moves. Gave up a pawn, won back the pawn on e5. Okay, so it's even material, I think, yes. And White. Start simplifying. All these games got simplified really rapidly. Okay. White well, has maybe more a slightly worse pawn structure, but slightly more active pieces, I would say. Uh, the pawn structure should favor black because of the weak C pawn and A pawn, but really that's you know, doesn't mean much. Okay, so this is where we stand. Um, I don't see that either player has any particular advantage here. Maybe maybe Black has a little bit of pressure because of his pressure on the C pawn, and he now owns the E file. But okay, oh the B pawn fell. See, I'm not calculating. Okay, and uh, can he play Queen A6, or is it too risky? Is there too much going on in the last rank and Bishop E5 check and those kinds of moves? So this is getting interesting. I guess he's considering Queen takes A6. Is there something? Did anybody see anything particularly wrong with that? You got this rookie one check followed by maybe queen c1 or queen d1. Okay, he's counterattacking instead. That calls for either queen c4 or perhaps perhaps move like bishop d4. Or no, excuse me. Okay, so the defensive move would be something like queen c4. Are any checks for black any good? That's the next thing to check. Check that out. I don't see anything special for black in terms of rook e1 check, which just keeps the which makes the last rank weak, or queen b1 or queen c1. Just offhand, I don't see anything special about that because, for example, on queen c1, king h2, queen f4, g3, that f2 pawn is covered. So, at least there don't seem to be any immediate wins for black or anything that special. Does anybody else see anything? Yes, keep the closer draw. So he did play queen c4 just to protect that F1. That's what I would have done. Protects the A pawn too, which has always been a big issue. So I don't know, is it possible to play a move like Rook C7, trying to drive the Queen away from that very nice defensive square? That's a possibility. Anyway, let's, before we kind of lose track, I forget these games go so quickly, you don't want to lose what's going on. Um, so let me see, did the Dreyev game already, okay, we still, we have the uh, Kachyan game still going on. Ah, oh, so that was quite a, we left that at, uh, oh, look at that. Things have changed dramatically. Black has a passed pawn. I would think only black can win this because he has bishop versus knight. Seems like a promising position for black, but probably drawn would be my guess. I don't know what Keaton thinks about that, but um, black has bishop versus knight. That's always something and a passed pawn that seems to be worth a little something. So I wouldn't, wouldn't want to be completely sure, but on the other hand, there are, there, it's reduced material. The C-pawn can even be weak sometimes. So um, I don't know what people think of this game, but it looks it looks like White's within a, a drawing margin here. It's good to see that uh, Malik is doing well here, uh, because earlier it looked difficult to me. Although after that move, B5 for White, I wasn't so worried. We can go back and take a quick look at that, unless there's something else we should be looking at. Uh, and maybe there is something else we should be looking at. Let's, let's keep up here. Okay, so that got simplified very quickly after queen c2. I'm going to get better as the weeks go on at uh, moving between, from game to game and finding critical moments. Okay, there's king f8, king f1, king e8, rook b7, d8. Uh, interesting move. Yeah, at the very, very best, white would win the A pawn and probably end up drawing anyway. But, <laughs> but, but bishop d8 didn't seem like a necessary move, but it might be a good one. Um, what's the clock doing here? Oh, so we're pretty short on time. Oh, 13 seconds, 12 seconds. Oh, black's totally short of time here. So this is a clock factor. I, I'm terrible myself with a clock, so I'm very sympathetic here. 
So White should have good chances because simply because of the fact, simply because of the clock. That's Craig Hilby now, our player for San Diego. Should have some decent chances here. He's burning up a lot of time here thinking about this. I can't see what would be wrong with taking the pawn if you want to keep pressure on your opponent. The king's within the range of the A pawn, so that's not an issue. Okay. Very exciting. This is interesting. He did. He took with the A pawn. Okay. And now he's running back to protect. Yeah, that's interesting. I guess there was a move like rook a7 also would have been very interesting. I don't know what would have happened there. Now king d8, right? Although he can take that. I see. Okay, and now a4 is the only try. So it looks because white's within the square of the pawn that white's simply going to win this now. Not sure if black played that perfectly, but on the other hand, uh, Craig took some time calculating here. It looks like he did a good job. This looks hopeless for Black, unless I'm missing something. And I don't know what that would be. And the clock's going. Yes, there we go, White won. So this is a great day so far for the San Diego Surfers. And, uh, and let's get back before the other games finish. We've got 16 games in each match, so I shouldn't be too worried. <laughs> uh, people, you don't have to panic on either, either side of these things, uh, because there's so many games to be played. I always forget that. In this, in this format, we have just a ton of games to be played, but it's sure looking very nice at the beginning for the surfers. Um, okay, now we have uh, this game again. What's happened here? Okay, Malik is still trying to win, I assume, but... Um, it's going to be very difficult. Uh, on the other hand, I think, once again, I, I just like Black's chances here just because knights are worse than bishops in this kind of position. So we'll see. So that looks like an interesting move. I was just looking at that. Try to either get rid of the bishop or get rid of the pawn. That looks like a very useful move. Of course, there might be tactical issues. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. Yeah, I don't see how Black can make any progress there. Hmm. So at some point... Yeah, I don't know what's going on here. I wonder if he really wanted this to happen. Now he's got the past A pawn. This is looking very, to me, it's looking very drawish because White's king is perfectly well placed. I don't know what anybody thinks about that. Very interesting game. Um, and that, you know, these end games are always tricky. You can't assess them immediately. But it looks, to me, it looks somewhat drawish. That would be my guess. Just because the A pawn will make up for White's, uh, Black's weaknesses on the king side. Well, White isn't even trying to win this. White's just goofing around. And Black's going to have trouble trying to win it, too. Ah, finally he does that. Now, that was interesting, because he could have tried rook h5 in order to take a pawn with check. This way, it's the past f pawn. Now maybe rook f4 and try to get to rook a4, something like that. Yeah, there's rook f4. Wow, look at this. So now f4, yeah, because if the king stays on g2, there probably won't be, it's going to take a long time for that king to advance. Ah, interesting move. I like what black did there. He's going back on the defensive all the way. Maybe it's too late. <laughs> oh, this is pretty crazy. Oh, on the other side, is any time left. I keep forgetting about the clock. Ouch. White won. Wow, that's too bad. I think Mel Melek played a very good game, but just ran out of time. Oh, cruel. It's very cruel. Yes, okay. Okay, folks, what do we think about that? It's all about the clock now, exactly. <laughs> exactly, okay, so what do we have left? Do we have any games left? Wait, is that it? Um, no, we still have. Okay, so the game, this game was drawn. I don't know if we got to that last position, but that, anyway, it got to this position. This game looked like it was headed very quickly towards a draw anyway. So that's the end of the match. Looks like that San Diego won the first round of this four-round match, all to be played tonight by uh, two and a half, one and a half, if I'm not mistaken. And wow, this is exciting stuff. Um, I'm sorry I can't make more intelligent comments. When things are going this fast, it's not so easy. So um, amazing. All right, let me get this microphone set up. And we'll just sort of wait for the second round while we catch our breath. I'll have to figure out a good rhythm for talking about these games. I think you can tell that I'm a little confused by when to switch games and what's important. And I was thinking about looking at them all on the other um, on another computer, but I have to admit the whole thing with the sound uh, kind of uh, scared me, and I, I lost track. Uh, wow, they had almost no time left here, but actually Black had a lot of time. That's partly why. 
Oh wait, White had a lot of time, excuse me, is that right? Yeah, White had a lot of time, so that's why that happened, I guess. Let me, let me see, because otherwise you kind of wonder why they wouldn't play it out. If the clock had been an issue. What was the final time? No, seven seconds and four seconds. I'm a little surprised they didn't just play this out, but, but um, he gave up at this point. Probably pretty easy with a two second increment. It's probably pretty easy for White to handle, uh, or a good player to handle something like this. For me, of course, it would be hopeless, but, but uh, yeah, exactly. It's 15 with a two second increment. Yeah, if it was actually no increment, then of course they would have played out this position because it would just be who can move the pieces faster. Um, okay, great game, really exciting game. In fact, I think all these games were rather interesting. They all had a lot of content. There was no really sterile kind of all the pieces go off draws and that's always fun. So now I guess we're preparing for the next round, which means I'm going to click these games off. We could analyze them a little bit, but I think instead of that, we, we could kind of catch up on what happened in between when we left off looking at them and the end of the game. But I think we could all use a little bit of a break, a little bit of a breath. So I think for this round, I'm just going to click these games off and wait for the next round to start. Okay, there we go. So, let me take a little second here. I'll be back in a second to start the next round. I'm glad that the sound's working out better, and maybe I'll work on it a little more. Thanks, everybody. Uh, I'm going to take just a few seconds break here. Okay, here we go. Back again. We're starting right now, and there we go. Uh, so we have Melik playing um, uh, Margalashvili, and is that right? No, sorry, we have Dreyev playing Margalashvili. Here we have, um, uh, I'm still getting used to these, these uh, pseudonyms here. Um, Craig, Craig Hilby is playing Orloff. And Michael Brown is playing LOL. I'm going to have to figure out who these people are again. Um, L O L K A T Z Z. Can someone tell me who that is? You know, it's funny about Orloff being called Knight uh, Tango because he wrote a book on the Knight's Tango, so that makes a lot of sense. Um, who is uh, L-O-L-K-A-T-Z-Z? -Z? Can anybody tell me that? I should have noticed last time. Oh, it's a 2291. So that's probably Bruce um, Tiglon. L-O-L-K-A-T-Z-Z. -Z. I'm going to write these down. Okay, so those two games have started. And we also have the... Um, Okay, here's the Knights Tango game. There we go. So they're all up there. Okay. Okay. It is uh, Malik versus uh, Margalashvili. So let's just start with one of these games. Okay, so this was a Sicilian, Bishop e5, Rossellino game. Well, with the knight c3 bishop b5 system, which is quite unique with f4, but it's a grand prix attack. And a very famous structure, which has a slight tendency in the tradition to favor white, just slightly because of those doubled pawns. But black plays it, is obviously willing to play it, so it's not that bad. Um, the idea is that even though black has the two bishops, they're very restricted. White has moves like b3, knight a4, bishop a3. 
Black would like to play bishop a6, but, but uh, he's kind of blocked off. I don't know, personally, I, I kind of like these positions for white, but I may be a more positional player. Um, and black is thinking here, that means very little. We're talking about two top players here. Okay, let's take a look at this one. The Dreyev game here against Mikhailovsky. Uh, Alexei Dreyev versus Mikhailovsky. Oh, no big theoretical game here. Okay, so let's just start at the beginning and see this is a Grinfeld. Well, sort of theoretical. Standard kind of structure anyway. I don't know the exact names here. It reminds me of a standard Grinfeld <laughs> with uh, with white taking the big center. And Okay, bishop f3, that's an interesting move. Um, I guess there may have been a tactical issue with f3. Or white's just happy with his space advantage. Okay, now now it's black's move. He can't play rook takes d4 because of bishop e3 is one idea. Um, so white would like to play bishop e3. He's defending his b-pawn with the queen on e2. And I'm just catching up. So, okay, so now we're sort of catch, caught up here. I mean, offhand, white still has the center. I guess this question is what, what kind of break black's going to try and make here? Is he going to get a c5 move in? It seems a little loose, a little, maybe a little unlikely, because d5 is so strong threatening e5. Um, what is black going to do here about this bishop e3 move? What's black's plan? So this is a good example of how a strong player has to come up with a plan against a, a player who's just got a very simple idea for white. Just play bishop e3, bring the pieces back to the center, and advance the center. So what, if black does nothing, white's better. Of course, that doesn't mean much, but, but it means that it sort of it puts the burden of proof on black to find a plan. And we'll be interested to see what happens there. Let's go to another game. And see, uh, there's the Mellet game. He played very cautiously, just bishop e7. As I said, I like white in most positions, but that's just me. Here's the Orloff game against um, Craig Hilby. Um, Craig Hilby is black. And we have, oh, interesting, uh, Benoni, Benoni game. And that should be fun to look at. Let's take a quick look at that one, go back to the beginning. Wait, actually, let's go right back. Okay, so here we are with the Benoni defense. Absolutely standard, classical Benoni, knight d2. 96. Okay, so that's an that's an old line, and uh, these are all book moves. Okay, that's one way of playing. This is a very complicated way of playing. Now it's it'd be interesting to see who knows more theory here. Uh, B6 is the old way of playing, and uh, this is can be kind of almost a gambit line. Knight A3. I'm trying to wonder if that's normal. No, Knight E3 has been normal for years. That is to play Knight E3 and then F4. So after F5, you play you play Knight E3, F5. You take you play F4. Actually, you don't, you don't take first. You play f4, then you take on f5, then you play rook f3, g3. I had a game like that with the U.S. junior many, many years ago. I lost it as black, actually. So knight a3 is interesting. It's probably a known move. These are, you know, booked up players. But uh, on the other hand, I, I'm not thrilled with f5 is the natural and normal response. That's what everyone plays in these positions. Uh, now that knight can go to g6. Yes, that's a good square. That's why a lot of times white doesn't take first. He plays f4 first. But here f4 might have allowed knight g4. Okay, knight comes back to the center, and black is thinking. Okay, interesting position. So white has that beautiful knight on c4, but black is considered to have a decent position in these kinds of these kinds of positions. Uh, let me think what would be a plan here for black. I mean, you can always play king h8 and think about uh, rook g8. Oh, queen, queen, uh, queen f6 is a pretty natural move. Rook b8, b6, a6, b5, that kind of thing can happen. So let's think realistically. What's what's the most logical move? Okay, so he's checking first, and then he's going to play queen f6 probably. Is my guess. Yeah, there he goes. Okay, so that's one way to do it. He probably doesn't threaten the knight on c3 because that's too dangerous to take. Well, that's certainly too dangerous to take, but it does give him a lot of pressure down that diagonal. And um, I think black's usually okay in these positions. It's hard for white to get coordinated. Notice that white's bishops aren't that good. The d5 pawn blocks off the e2 bishop, and the f4 pawn blocks off the c1 bishop. Now, of course, black's a little slow, too, with the, with the bishop on, uh, which will be, the bishop will be on d7. But right now, he's got the only rook on an open file. I'm just, just guessing. Maybe I'm a little prejudiced because I played the Benoni, but I think, um, I think black should be at least okay here. Probably objectively, it's, it's fairly e dynamically equal. This, this could be a great game, really interesting game. So let's go back into um, a couple of, yeah, let's go to a couple of the games we haven't even looked at yet. Sorry, we haven't even looked at these yet. Bad timing. You guys should warn me when I'm getting too, uh, too distracted. Okay, there's Orloff as white versus Craig. Whoops, 
Let's see what happened here. Oh, okay. So we've got uh, a positional um, version of the um, Ruy Lopez with uh, Bishop takes c6 line. These have been very popular for a little while, but I think black's considered very solid in these positions. Okay, so the idea is that black has these double pawns, but he has two bishops to make up for it, and those doubled pawns can actually be powerful if, what, if black can reorganize. So this is just a game. Both sides are just developing their pieces. Basically, the, white's hoping that the knights are better than the bishops because of the pawn structure, because of those double c pawns. Black just wants to count on his bishops and will slowly develop. Well, what's white trying to do? Well, maybe he'll try to get d4 in via, say, rook d1 or something. Right now he's on the a5 pawn, so I think we'll see uh, b6. Okay, so white doesn't try to break through d4 or anything like that. Maybe he's going to play f3. Uh, I don't know what's going on here. It just seems like maneuvering. Neither side has a very clear plan that I can see. There's a crazy idea of playing rook takes d3 here, and then after takes, knight takes, and knight takes b2. <laughs> but I think that maybe our knight gets trapped. That would be so much fun, wouldn't it, folks? But it looks like knight's going to get trapped So after rook b1. So too bad. Uh, <laughs> what else can be played? Um, what, what is black trying to do? Is he really going to play for b5, for example? Is that a helpful move, kind of breaking down the queen side? Probably not yet, in any case. He could simply double. Uh, F5 is certainly not a move that we can... Well, it's a move that he'd be very reluctant. Okay, so he makes another waiting move. That's kind of what we expected here. There doesn't seem to be a clear plan for either side here. Not a really easy thing to play here. So that's kind of fascinating. We'll see how they solve that problem in, in with the time situation the way it is. That makes it much harder to solve positional problems like this. Okay, here's Michael's game. Oh, excuse me, that was Michael's game. Okay. This is the two knights tango game again. Has anything happened? Oh, knight a5. Strange, strange move. We're trying to get if b6, knight c6, I guess. Um, the rook on a3 makes a lot of sense. It's coming over maybe to g3. It covers c3. That's a good move. Um, so is black willing to play b6 and allow knight c6? And if he doesn't, maybe white will play rook b3 and try and force b6. I think that's what's going on here. So we'll leave that at that for a second. Uh, comments, people? Got any, any ideas here? Go ahead on uh, the chat here if you have any ideas about what's going on. It's funny not to be able to make more serious analysis like we do in some of the other broadcasts because this is just these games go so quickly and there's four of them at the same time. So it seems like wild guessing. Um, okay, let's go back to this again. This is the um, Tidelon um, Michael Brown game. I, th I think it's just fairly. Okay, so he finally made a break with f4. So that was the plan. Makes sense. Extend the range of the bishop on b2. Um, and if, if black plays uh, e takes f, he opens up some lines for his own pieces, like bishop d6 and stuff, but he reduces his grip on the center. So what are the options here? He could simply defend e5. Uh, I don't know. What, how would he do that? I guess you have to ask whether f5 is a threat. I don't think it really is. Uh, it's not a bad move, but it's not much of a threat. I guess b takes f4 seems like the most natural move to me. And then we might have moves like um, knight e6 and bishop c5. This is a tough one. Does anybody, I don't know if anybody has any ideas here. This is, a, this is an interesting position. I'm uh, very unclear what black should be doing here. Maybe he shouldn't have allowed f4. The four looks like a good move to me, like it might give a slight advantage. But probably nothing really special. What is black going to play, though? I guess one big question. He has to decide whether bishop d6 allows knight g4 and f5 and moves like that, and queen h4. Oh, that's a problem. Okay, so that really can't do that. I don't think we can allow that. So it looks to me like e takes f4 is going to be the move. But he's worried about e takes f4. Why? Is knight g4? No, that's covered by the queen, excuse me. Uh, just rook takes, hitting the f-pawn, followed by moves like knight g4 and queen h4. So white has a kingside attack here, and, and black's trying to figure out how to slither out of that kingside attack. I suppose the knight could come back to d7, and he could start retreating. It's not what he wants to do, but on the other hand, it's probably not horribly risky. Oh, on the other hand, that allows knight g4. 
Aha, uh -huh. okay, so some real problems to be solved here. I didn't realize this. Uh, I didn't see F4 before, and uh, I didn't realize how strong it is. I'm starting to like white's position here, because I'm not quite sure how to, how to hold together black's position without giving away too many squares. And that's, yeah, e takes f4. Boy, that sure seems forced. Okay, rook takes f4. Now what? Bishop e6 maybe to stop knight g4 would be a move. Um, I don't know if knight e6 does any good. If f5 is possible, f5 looks way too risky. Uh, knight e6. Um, so anyway, all you, uh, uh, you might want to be looking at this position and thinking of ideas. Oh, we have a stockfish thing. Is that in this game? Plus 0.86? That makes sense to me. I like White's position. But uh, that's not even a whole pawn, so it's not overwhelming, but it's a nice advantage. It's almost almost what they call a clear advantage. Maybe not quite. I, I'm not sure how Black is playing this. Yeah, that makes sense. Stop knight g4 and protect f6. That looks like the move. Um, on the other hand, the knight has even fewer squares to play around with now. Even a move like d4 is possible. Or just bringing the queen over. So yeah, white's got some pressure here. Okay, so let's just continue uh, to some other games before we lose them completely. Here's some other games. We have uh, the Melik game, which has uh, changed dramatically. Let's go back a little bit with this and see what's happened here. Okay, so he did get the move bishop a6 and c4 in, but a lot of times there's a cost for that. b3, remember I mentioned that move b3. So structurally, white's still better because even if even if he manages to take uh, exchange that pawn off of the b pawn, then there's either the a or the c file which will be punishing him. So I like white here positionally. The question is if black has anything else. That's kind of a bad sign because it cuts off the bishop on e7. I'm surprised about that move. Maybe the idea is to take on b3 and then play c4. That's probably the idea. Okay, and he does that, and then he play. He's probably okay. First bishop b7 because he has to cover the bishop on a6, which was on pre. Knight there looks like a, a safe move. I don't know if it's the best move necessarily, but it looks like a safe move. Okay, so what's going on here? I have very complicated. It's great games. These are really nice matches. They're very interesting. Very double-edged. Nobody's being scared here. So is the pawn on d6 um, strong or weak? I guess rook d1's coming. And um, okay, so he's going to take that. And what's he planning to do? Get a knight onto d5, but that would allow c4. So offhand, I sort of like white here, just first instincts, but um, what do I know? Now if knight f6, simply rook d1, uh, queen b6, okay, probably rook d1 anyway. I don't know, there's also the idea of the bishop coming to b2 and the rook to g3, or the queen to h4, or g3, or rook to g3. I'm not really liking this for black, because I think there's attacking chances for white here which is, of course, good for San Diego, so I should be cheering him on. Uh, Queen e4 is a good centralizing move. You know, I'm starting to like white here. There's a little bit of uh, attacking chances on the king side, I think. Uh, unless black has a plan. Um, well, he has a c4 check move, come to think of it. So I'm not really paying much attention here. What about c4 check? I guess we just move the king. It might be worth it anyway to get a little extra room over there on the queen side for black, even if you lose a tempo. Yeah, I think that's a good move. I hadn't seen that, but at least the d pawn is very well protected now in d6. It's hard, hard to believe that white isn't somewhat better here. Oh, he's thinking about the end game, because white is better in the end game. So queen f2 is quite a reasonable move. So, but king h1 is the natural move. That's the one you would expect, yeah. So he played that. And I assume, assume rook takes, yeah, because you can use that tempo. I think white's got more practical chances here. It's true that uh, black's got a very sound pawn structure. And maybe, you know, a knight can get to, well, it's a sound pawn structure, but I don't know about you guys, but I kind of like the idea of, um, I like white's uh, prospects here. That pawn on d6, I think, is strong rather than weak. Um, okay, well, anyway, we'll come back to that. At least um, Malik has a uh, time advantage. Okay, here's the Dreyev game again, and let's go to the end first. Okay, wow. Big knight on d6, but I guess it's easily easy to challenge. Uh, that move f6 allows some weaknesses in black's position. So offhand, it looks like white's got some nice space advantage here and some advantage, maybe even a big advantage. But you never know in these positions because all of a sudden some things get traded off. And that knight coming to d5 will be useful at some point. Knight c7, d5, that kind of idea. Looks like white's better offhand. Now let's go back and see what happened, which would be, I think, instructive. 
Okay, well, this is the position where I really liked white scan because I couldn't think of what black was going to do. Well, here's the answer for what black did. Basically nothing. White. Okay, good. He challenges the knight. And he tries to put a knight on d6. So right now it looks excellent for white. I wonder if maybe he plays a little bit too slowly. Because here... Ooh, queen b8, that's an odd move. f4, queen b8. I'm not sure why he needs that. Oh, he wants to play knight c7, d5. Instead of just knight c8 challenging the knight on d6. I guess that's because the other knight can come in. But that would be interesting. Or after knight c8, you could take it and put the other knight on d6. Okay. So what he's doing with queen b8 is thinking about knight c7 to d5. But that means white's probably better. Okay, that's cool. He isolates the e-pawn to make sure that he gets a weakness out of all this. And comes back. Now that bishop has to move because the bishop is covering the weak dark squares. Now e6 is a potential target, but also knight f3 e5 is a possibility coming up. Okay, so we've stopped here. Black's a little shorter of time. Um, I, I guess most people would prefer white here. There's space and there's a weakness. Of course, the d-pawn is a little bit of a weakness too. And white has a bad bishop on e3. Very natural move, knight, knight d5. Uh, in fact, if white takes that, you can take the e-pawn, and that's, of course, very strong because that activates the rook. Okay. Now, black might just bring the other knight over to support that knight. I'm not sure. Something like knight c7. He could also bring the queen back to the center. Okay, knight c7 to support that knight. Very logical move. Okay, so the question is, is white... First sight, like white seems much better, or at least a second ago he did, but the problem is here is that black's, black has no big weaknesses. The pawn on e6 is not really much worse than the pawn on d4, so those are kind of canceling each other out. Black has a lovely outpost on d5, um, so white's probably better, but not, I think, significantly. It's going to be difficult. Maybe h4, h5 is an idea. Maybe just slowly building up with rook c1 and knight c5. Okay, so, so Black's trying to simplify. That makes a lot of sense. Maybe he's worried about this knight c5 idea. In fact, knight c5 right now is possible, isn't it? Yeah. Then one question is whether... Oh, interesting. Okay, so I'm sure he had this... This is one where they both probably calculated this line exactly. If the knight on c5 takes on e6, maybe, maybe something simple like rook e8 and then h6. And yeah, so it seems impossible to take that pawn, but you never know if there's some ingenious idea, but I don't believe that. That's simply not going to work. You can just take once and play rookie eight and, and win it, I think. Yeah, okay. So so what's white going to do? Maybe b4, or maybe just bring the knight back. That's a common thing to do when you have a space advantage. Just make sure that there are no exchanges. Okay, so if anybody's better, white is here. But it's still, with that bishop on f2, it's, it's just not, it doesn't seem like a really big deal to me. You know, the knight could go back to f6 now, for example. Or maybe the knight goes back to d5. Knight b5 to d6 to f5? I don't know. Yeah, okay, so white, white the more I look, that I look at it, you, you, know, you have to favor white here, but um, I don't know. It's just, it's not easy a lot of times. Okay, so he tried the knight f6 idea. It's kind, of, kind of interesting, that knight b5 idea. Okay. And White's just trying to keep pressure on. One of the things White's doing here is getting a nice lead in time on the clock. Uh, Black's taking this position very seriously. It might be that he just needs to make some waiting moves and not worry about it so much. I would think he'd recentralize the queen. I was just going to say, recentralize the queen, put a little pressure on d4. Think about bringing the queen to d5 sometimes, or at least d6. Great game. This is an interesting game. Now, I suppose we shouldn't lose... Um, yeah, rook f6, that's even better. Thank you, Stephen. Very good. Uh, that was an immediate win, but in any case, it lost a piece one way or another. Okay, so, um, yeah, chats, I should be looking at this. Did Orloff blunder? Oh, should we look at that? Sorry, I, I haven't, I'm not moving around enough. Okay, so here's the game as it stands. Queen e5. We have uh, black a piece up. Ouch. That's, yeah, and I don't see any compensation. Keaton, I, I see absolutely no. I mean, there's this idea of queen coming to the last rank, but it's not going to work, is it? Maybe you thought there was some sort of mate down on the last rank, or hoping for something like that. Uh, but there's not even a threat now. Bishop B6 isn't even a threat now. So this game's over, isn't it? Wonderful. Let's take a quick look and see what happened. Of course, we may not get that far back, because they'll be making moves quickly. Let's see. Okay, so B5. He got in B5. That's the goal. I'm surprised he allowed that. Yeah, generally I like, well, I'm prejudiced for black in these positions. Now there's a 
peace falling. How did that happen? Yeah, so I guess he blundered. Now, how did that... No, what, what, why did he blunder? This is the position. Uh, oh, just didn't see it. When he played rookie one, he just didn't see rook a3. Yeah, what happens? I mean, these time controls, it happens, right, Keaton? So that was the blunder. It just wins a piece. This this move, rook a3, I, I don't think there's any anything missed here. Wow. Uh, it might have been a brilliant... Idea. Okay, so that wasn't intentional at all. That was not a peace sacrifice. He's just, uh, now they're just playing moves. And I think uh, Black will win this game very shortly, unless there's a time issue, and there doesn't seem to be a time issue worth speaking of. Three minutes and 40 seconds is definitely enough to win this game, especially because Black has all the, he has got that past C pawn, he has beautiful knights. I think, I think this game will be over fairly, fairly quickly. So, um, Okay, great. Great news for San Diego anyway. Okay, so let's keep moving on here. We have um, the Michael Brown game uh, versus Thailand. Thailand versus Michael Brown. And what is happening here? Oh, oh, things have happened. Scary things. Oh my god. This is looks bad. It looks like, oh, but there's this, this comp. I don't know. It all depends on the exact tactics. Who's moving here? Okay, so why isn't the pin on the e-file worth anything? Clearly, this has been calculated, right? So I guess the idea is if bishop takes f6, well, he can't play knight takes, can he? Um, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Maybe he can, because if knight takes queen c3. Wow, this is a total mess. Is anybody calculating this? Throw this on, on uh, Stockfish. <laughs> I, I, I refuse to make a comment about this. It's way too complicated. I assume that white has worked this out exactly. Um, my first instinct was bishop takes f6 because the knight on e4 is pinned. But um, but as I say, there was a queen c3 at the end of that. Now there's a queen c3 right now too, right? Is it a possibility? Am I right? Queen c3 or maybe rook takes uh, f6. Rook takes f6, maybe black can get away with something like Queen g4? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think he can take it because knight takes check is just too strong, right? So rook f6 is a natural move. The other strange move would be queen, g queen c3 pinning on the long diagonal. That looks very scary. This is obviously very scary. The good thing is you're a piece up temporarily, but boy, this looks tough. Does everybody agree that this is looking very, very tough? I would think rook f6 is a very safe move, probably the one he'll play. And rook f6, I would think a good idea might be queen g4, just to kind of keep some threats going. I mean, there's no direct win for white in that position uh, that I see, unless queen c3 works again. But I don't think it does, because then queen e4, and if rook g6, you have queen g6. So, ooh, but that's very close if rook f7. Oh. Uh-oh, scary. He'll probably play rook f6. Now, there's also this queen c3 move. What does black do about that? Does black have any answer to queen c3? Any obvious answer? Mm. Maybe, well, the bishop takes d5, you have rook takes d5. So this is a tough decision because, because there are several good-looking moves here. Um, but it, it's not a friendly-looking position. I think rook f6 is probably the safer move, but it has to be calculated. Imagine trying to calculate this in a 15-minute game, with both sides having three minutes on their clock. Yes, he did. He played the, he played the, the safe way. It would be interesting to see what the uh, computer said there. Unlike ICC, you can't turn the computer on <laughs> to see what's happening. The analyst can't turn the computer on. Well, I was thinking queen g4, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe queen c3 is a good answer, but it, at least it's risky. Wow. Okay. And the idea is what? Well, king just moves, and what's the idea? Maybe then queen g4. Okay, so that's an idea. But then again, queen c3. Oh, no, but then we have rook d1. Okay, excuse me. I've been missing rook d1 in my calculations here. Okay, so that's, that's very interesting. This is extremely interesting. So if the king moves to h1, I guess the idea is queen g4. Does everybody agree with that? Oh, even though that's a fork square. Then I suppose it's possible that rook f4 would be a decent move, and if queen takes knight f6 check, 
followed by a bunch of discovered sharks. You know, take the rook on e8 first. Uh, I don't know. This is, yeah, well, this will come down to the clock. That's possibly true. But it might come down to the position if, if things are radical enough. I would say king h1, queen g4. Now, do we have rook, rook f4 protecting the knight? And if queen takes knight f6, oh, queen takes f6, excuse me. Okay, so that doesn't work. So rook f4 is not good. So if king h1, queen g4, well, how exactly does white play this? Any ideas, anybody? I'm going to need some analytical help here because, frankly, it's too much for me. Uh, rook e6 is sort of interesting, but then just bishop takes and the rook's covering f6 for the exchange sacrifice. So is that the point, everybody? I think that's the point, is if the king knows we're playing queen g4. <laughs> we'll see, huh? Well, surely he expected that move, so, so black should be ready. Yes, black should have been, just whipped that move out, I think. Oh, okay, rook f7. Interesting. Should have seen that. Now, of course, you have to think about moves like, uh, um, oh boy. I'm just guessing, folks. You guys all guessing? What a, what a complete, utter, total mess. Yeah, queen, I think that's forced queen f1. You've got to get out of the pin. That's just a forced move. And now it looks to me like the um, king probably should be running to the queen side. Oh, there's a queen c6. I'm sorry, so that's not good. Yeah, maybe. Can, can he play king e7? If he plays king g8, there's this knight f6, and then the battery is still there on the long diagonal. Oh, but then there's queen d1. Okay, so both moves might be okay. Maybe, maybe king g8 is okay. I'm kind of slow here. Anybody got any ideas? No, it's not fair to say this will just come down to the clock. You have to tell me what to play. <laughs> okay, so king g8, knight f6 check doesn't seem to work. Right, I guess rook takes, bishop takes or something. That's not very inspiring for white at all, is it? So, so I guess king g8 is the safest way to play it. And king e7 also seems playable to me. Does everybody agree with that, that king e7 is a playable move? Then maybe bishop f6 check, because you have this queen b5 check if he goes king d7. So I think we expect king g8 here. Oh, queen f5, okay. Well, there's always that. I was thinking that allowed him to play knight g5 check, but maybe knight g5 check is worthless. Oh, okay. So there's things like, what, uh, rook e4, exactly. And then a queen c3, probably. Oh, okay, so okay, that's interesting too, because it hits c7. This is just enormously complicated. We're sticking with this game for a while just because it seems like it's absolutely critical and important. Maybe now just something like rook d8, so that if queen c7, rook d7, I mean, we're, I think we're starting to get defensive here. Does, does black have any aggressive plan here? Rook e7, possibly. Um, I'm no good at blitz, so I don't know what, what would work here. Now we're really getting short of time. Never said the clock would be everything that mattered. Okay, that's a good move, but okay, he just makes an escape square. He doesn't worry about anything else. I don't like the fact that queen g7 is now an issue. We have a queen c3 move. Okay, so his idea there, by the way, was queen f1 check. That's why he played king g8. Now queen c3 is threatened and queen c7 is threatened. Queen c7 is interesting because there's the extra pass pawn. Very scary. I, just offhand, in practice, you'd almost rather be white, wouldn't you? And maybe even in, in principle, too. Queen c3 again, king f8, exactly, he's running now. And that's that's the way to play it. There's a bishop a3, now is that going to work, though? 
Okay, so he's repeating. Now, will he keep repeating because of the clock? He could repeat one more time. Now bishop a3 followed by queen a8 maybe. Queen a8 uh, threatened queen c6. What queen a8? Oh, d6. Okay, interesting. Trying to crack everything open. Black's got a hurry. Oh, he's got to move instantly. Oof. Time is going to be a big issue. Two seconds now to make the next move. I don't like c6, but maybe it was necessary. Yeah. Maybe just take on, oh, I was going to say take on c6 even. Ooh, bishop b2, queen d8. No, bishop b2 is natural. I suspect that's a good move. Oh, look at that. He's just going to try and queen the pawn. How oh, interesting. Wow. Amazing. Okay, folks. Well, that was exciting. That was very exciting. Um, okay, let's quickly look at the other games then. So that's uh, a big win for uh, San Diego. That's uh, Two Nights of Tango's second loss. And what do we have here? We have um, uh, Dre of one. And Melquan, this is a slaughter. Is this right? Are we doing uh, this well? Okay, and Michael lost. So these games are over. Which one should we see the end of? Looks like a three to one win for San Diego. Am I right? Have I got that right? This is, um, yeah, uh, Dre of one and Melik one versus Martavella. Okay, so that means that, uh, and Michael lost. So he, he lost the only game. We could see how those finish. Have we already seen the end of this game? I wonder if we'd seen the end of this game. Um, we can try some of these games. Um, oh, that one was just a piece up, and it's not too surprising that he converted that. So maybe that's not too interesting. Let's go the other way and see what else we've got here. This one, did we see the end of this? Wow. So this game was over at this point. That's a little surprising. Maybe there was a time issue. Oh, there must have been, because Black would, Black would play this out, right? I mean, Black would force White to try to do something, although maybe doubling rooks on the last rank is decisive. Yeah, because there's mates and things. So maybe maybe he did just resign because it was so obvious. Let's see, what was the last move? We can go back a few moves and see what happened here. Yeah. So how did White achieve this amazing position? Oh, okay, so those, now there's rookie A. Oh, and there's zero time for Black. So Black ran out of time, but it's still a winning game. It looks like for White. He, pretty easily winning, actually. And, and how did that happen? Maybe we should go back a ways. We we uh, we never saw enough of this game. We we got the bishop e three idea. Black had sort of tried to consolidate. This is where the weakness was on e six. But Black was using too much time. We saw that from the very beginning. I'm not so sure this position is that bad, but the time situation was awful. Yeah. Oh, interesting move. D five. So he broke through with d five and he won the exchange with bishop c five. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, and maybe that's the reason it was better for White all along, was because that tactic was in the air. I, I didn't see that tactic. Okay. Well, now, now it's just material. So it's a matter of technique and time. Remember, there was no time left. Okay, excellent. Any comments from our uh, chat folks here? Don't have any just recently. I guess, the, I guess the sound is okay. Is that right, everybody? Is our sound doing reasonably well? We will move into the next round soon, I guess. So San Diego is doing incredibly well with a 3-1, a 2.5, a and, and then a 3-1. A nice lead going into the third round. There's plenty of time, of course, for uh, Seattle to come back. This is, uh, just to recap, this is uh, the San Diego Surfers versus the Seattle Sluggers. The first week of the Pro Chess League, on uh, 2017 Pro Chess League. Uh, all the players play all the other players. and. I still need to um, get organized. And Kalowski. Okay, and Margulashvili is going to play. I don't know who's going to play next. I don't have the schedule in front of me, but we'll see. The games will come up and we'll see. Maybe I should talk about some of these people. Mikolevsky is a grandmaster from Israel. He's won many tournaments over the years. And he's also um, written some books and vid done videos that you may be familiar with. Some excellent books. Uh, Georgi Orlov has been a big 
factor in the Northwestern chess. He's an IM for many, many years and uh, has, has run various training programs and coaching programs for many years. Really well known for that. Bruce Tylen is a 16-year-old FIDE master, very highly ranked for his age. Um, and did I miss somebody on the Seattle side? Well, Georgi uh, Margulashvili, who by that, by the way, is the name of the Georgian president. So when I first saw that name, I went, something's wrong here. But in fact, there, he's just the exact same name. He's not the president of Georgia, but he has the same name, and he's a 26-year-old grandmaster. So very strong player. Okay, on top of that, we have, did we talk about the San Diego players? I think we did. Um, so I guess we'll just wait for the next round. Let's give me a chance to get a sip of water. I don't know how anybody calculates so quickly in these games. It's just so impossible. There is some guesswork going on. There's definitely some intuition and guesswork going on in, in these games. We saw our first couple major blunders there, it seems like, in that round. Really well played games, but a couple of just basic oversights, including that piece loss by Orloff. Um, Okay, so the new game starting. Let me just get rid of these for the moment. There we go. Okay. Two more rounds, exactly. There's two more rounds. There's four rounds total. We've done two of them. We have uh, the first round came out two and a half, uh, one and a half in favor of San Diego. The second one came out three and one. It says, please try to flip between games a little more. Thank you. Yes, that's true. Well, we had that one game, Keaton, where everything was hanging. We had to stick with that for a little while. But Keaton's absolutely right. I got too stuck, especially in that one game. But it was so exciting with all those pieces hanging. Uh, in fact, it would be wonderful to put that on the computer. But you're absolutely right. We should enjoy the games as, as sporting endeavors. Uh, and you missed out on, on what happened in several of those games. So I'll try to be more disciplined. Um, yeah, so two more rounds. And... Um, the pairings are just basically everybody who hasn't played the other people from the other side, they'll all play each other. So you get a chance to play everyone. It's a very interesting system. And uh, of course, it means a lot, a lot of pressure. Four games right in a row, one after another, and with such a short time control. OK, so here we go. So Michael Brown is playing uh, Mr. Mark, uh, Mark Velashvili, as I say, not the president of um, Georgia. Although that's the exact name he has. He has uh, the name Georgi Margiefsvili, so isn't that bizarre? Okay, we have the game starting. Let's, uh, the first thing we have, okay, let's just, let's just stick, stick with one game just for the opening, for the for first few moves. Here's Knight's Tango with uh, Dreyev playing against Orloff. Dreyev just, okay, Bogo Indian. And then we'll flip to another game really quickly, but let's just first check this out. Okay, well... Uh, Dreyf has played everything in his life a million times, so when he thinks it's uh, quite quite interesting, Knight B2 has gotten much more popular in recent years. Uh, Orloff has played the Bogo forever. <laughs> this is uh, this is his absolute specialty. He's played it for uh, you know, 40 years or something and written books about it. After Bishop G2, he was the one who really emphasized this uh, Queen E7 system. Yeah, d5, that sort of move, that's been played more more recently, that kind of idea. Instead of playing for structures with b6 and castles and maybe d6, e5, you just immediately play d5. And I think queen a4 check is the standard answer there. Okay, so this is just sort of a normal opening here, and we'll uh, let's switch to the next one and see if we see something interesting going on. Between um, Bruce Tylen as black here against... Um, uh, I'm sorry, who we have? Melik. Okay, uh, Kachian. So what happened here? We had a... Um, uh, let me just start from the beginning. We had a Sicilian... Whoops. Uh, Nidorf with A4. I used to play A4. Knight C6 is a very good answer because for one thing, it means that G6 can follow and you can get a kind of a dragon thing where the A4 isn't necessarily that good. I used to play Knight B3 in that position, not Bishop B2. 
Oh, E5, interesting. So it's kind of a Boleslavsky system with A6 and A4 in. I, I think black must be okay here. Very interesting. So uh, Bruce Tyler's doing some interesting stuff here. And white is thinking. Okay. That seems like a legitimate choice for, for black, but uh, the other thing you could do, of course, is just play G6 there. It's kind of a nice dragon. Uh, that's why I like to play knight b3. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, we had another move here. Okay, knight f3. So what White would like to do is what he did in that other game where he castled and played knight d2, and played knight c4 or bishop c4, that kind of reorganization. <clears throat> so White will castle and Black will castle. Black will play bishop e6 at some point, probably. Now White's basic idea is, he may, yeah, bishop g5, that's to clear the d5 square. So one theme here is to play bishop g5, take on f6 at some point, play knight d2, c4, Maybe a5, knight e3, put a knight on d5. Um, but generally, these positions are considered pretty equal. So black will probably play bishop e6, is my guess. <clears throat> and white will play knight d2. So let's keep going so I don't get too stuck on one game here. Um, OK, we just looked at that one. And we have this one, Mikaleski versus uh, the um, uh, Craig Hilby, and oh, okay, so this is another uh, uh, interesting Benoni. It's great that people are playing Benoni. That's very exciting. Let's take a quick look at that opening. Go all the way back. Okay, so here's the Benoni defense, and the bishop f4 system, and a6 is more popular than bishop g7. Okay, queen e7, that's, that, that's a big decision at that point, but let's just go with it. I, I tend to think rook e8 is more interesting, but okay. And black has played knight h5 and f5 ideas before, but knight e8 is probably better. Actually, these are probably all book moves. I think I've seen this in Marin and Petrov's book. Okay, so these are pretty standard ideas. I tend to like white in these positions a little bit. Black's made all logical moves, but white stands very solidly and has more space. And his bishop's out in front of his pawn chain, and I don't know. I, I, I just, you know, I'm a Benoni player, but I tend to think, I tend to like white slightly in these positions. But we'll see. I, I suspect this is a book position, actually my guess. Um, it certainly resembles some other lines where black plays 98 and f5 in this exact kind of position. Okay, so let's keep going here. Whoops, let's go the other way. We have, um, is it this game? Okay, we haven't seen this game yet. Let's check this out. Go back to the beginning. Okay, so this is um, another one of these English, uh, it's a ready. Now this is actually, a, formally speaking, a ready with knight f3 and g4. Sorry, I don't know how that happened. Oh, someone made a move. c6 is a very passive system. I always like playing against that as white, but it's, it's very common for black to play this one with a, a4. They just play a4 and harass the queen side. And he does that, even though it's dropping a pawn temporarily. So I don't know this uh, line at all. It's some sort of gambit. And I don't even understand it. Does everybody understand this? This isn't black a pawn down. Hmm. Uh, if white plays c takes b5, c takes b5, knight c3, folks, I guess it's just b4 and knight e4 and you get pressure. Wow, I don't understand that one at all. I don't know what's going on there. Um, Instead, he plays for pressure on the c4 square. Still, white's just white's a pawn up, right? White just won a pawn. This is kind of amazing, um, amazing system. Is anybody familiar with this, or was it even maybe a mistake? This, this is very odd. Yeah, you guys should subscribe. Excellent idea. Subscribe to this channel. I promise to get better every week as I get used to this time control and we get our technical issues uh, worked out. Knight a4 probably can't be too bad because if the knight has to get out of there eventually, although there's bishop b5 ideas, it can go to b2 and then knight d3. So bishop c1, knight b2, knight d3. If I was black, I'd strongly consider bishop b5 here because right now I don't think you have any compensation for the pawn. So as long as the knight went to a4 and kind of got itself stuck out there, why not play bishop b5? I'm not sure what White's doing. why white would allow that, breaking up his pawn structure. Now here you have moves like a3. So now bishop b5 is the idea, almost for sure. So I see that, so white has a couple things he could do about that. He could play a3, yeah, with natural move. Or he could maybe have retreated the bishop and brought the, bishop, the knight back to b2. Um, fortunately, these guys are so good, they make their decisions quickly. <laughs> 
So um, this is your grandmaster is white. This is your Georgian president is white. So he probably has some idea what he's doing. I don't know why Michael gave up that pawn. Maybe just some sort of really weird hallucination. <clears throat> yeah, I, I, I don't know about you guys. I just don't like the looks of this. I'm not sure if A3 is such a great move, but even it just seems funny to give up a pawn for so, such dubious, you know, compensation. Or so, such a, such unclear compensation. Whether it's dubious or not, I don't know. Okay, anyway. So let's keep moving, as was pointed out. And to do that, we go to back to the Mikulevsky game, maybe, versus Hilby. Okay, bishop e5. Now, that's a little unusual, I think. I, I don't know all the latest theory of this. I don't play it this way as black, and I certainly don't play it as white. So, But um, bishop e5, I guess the idea is you know, he's just threatening to play bishop takes bishop. Um, it seems to me you could play bishop h6, for example, here. Um, white's just playing for a tiny little bind here. Okay, so he took it. So maybe he thinks that if the knight gets to e5, now one thing about having that knight on e5 is even when it get hit, gets hit by f4 or something, you can go back to f7 a lot of times. That's a very nice square, f7. It covers the d6 square, and it's uh, just uh, very, very well placed for a later kingside action. Um, so f, so playing f4 is going to be dangerous for white because it, it requires white to be able to play e4. So maybe that's white's plan. Um, knight takes it. F4 followed by E4, or F4 followed by Bishop F3 and E4. But we, we, we should see. We, we will see. Okay, let's keep moving here. Um, yeah, I, I would play Knight Takes. I wouldn't goof around with anything else. F4 is, is, is risky. So there's also the idea after F4 you play a move like Knight G4, and if takes, Queen takes E3 check, followed by Queen takes D2. Those things at least have to be calculated. The, it's, so the immediate F4 maybe allows moves that... that um, White really doesn't want to allow, like maybe knight g4, for example. Of course, then there's bishop takes. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure. But it has to be done carefully. So maybe white first plays a move like bishop f1, thinking about f4 and e4. Be interesting to see. I think uh, we have some. Like, Black might even be thinking about b5. He may not even wait for um, knight c7 and bishop d7. Black's other move, natural move now, is to bring the knight back to f6, where it covers a lot of central squares. So black has a lot of useful moves. Just a question of how is white setting up. This is kind of the key point right here. I wouldn't be surprised to see him spend a little time. Uh, this move, bishop f1, seems sort of natural, just because black's getting a little bit of an attack anyway on the king side. Or might get one. So that covers more king side squares. Maybe he's worried about f4. Maybe if bishop f1, f4, but then, it, then you have to worry about pawn takes pawn, rook takes f4, and g3 and f4. You gotta make sure that tactically that works. I guess there's rook b4 then for black, so that's fine. Okay. So maybe f4 he's a little worried about. So he doesn't want to play bishop f1. Maybe he's calculating f4 right away, just playing f4, and then maybe moving the bishop to f1 or f3, and then playing for the move e4. Yeah, he is. Okay, so, so the next move is probably, now it could be knight g4 like I mentioned, but then maybe bishop g4 takes... That's, that's a little funny. Knight g4, if pawn takes, I think queen takes e3 looks pretty good to me, because f4 is hanging as well as d2. So knight g4 has to be considered. If knight f7, I think you'll see a move like bishop, uh, either d3 or f3, probably f3, with the idea of playing e4. You could also throw knight c4 in first, but knight c4 doesn't do much good, I don't think, because black plays some moves like knight f6, for example, and then the move knight b6 really doesn't threaten much. So probably bishop f3 right away after knight f7. Well, knight d7, okay, well there's another move, nothing wrong with that. Uh, I guess he wants to cover b6. I, I, offhand, I don't like making the move knight d7 in that position, but it would have been interesting to see either knight g4 or knight f7, but anyway. Okay, moving on now, we're gonna to stick to a beautiful position though, strategically, to talk about. Now let's think about Melek versus, oh, look at this, this is going, uh, this is getting dynamic. So we left this at uh, uh, a4, knight 6 there, e5. He went back there. Okay, so we saw these moves. Bishop g5 makes sense. Cover d5. Okay, so he just simply takes it and occupies d5. I think Keaton would agree that this tends to be okay. These positions tend to be okay for black, but we'll have to see. Um, taking is natural because there's a knight before idea. Now knight before is a threat, so c3. Now what's black's idea? Black needs to make up for the fact that he's lost the d5 square. Hmm. 
Okay, so maybe white's just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit better here. I wonder if black had some more options there. I think he did. I don't like the fact that he played rook c8 aiming for knight before. Yeah. Somehow that didn't seem to work. Now, maybe nothing worked, but I don't, I, I don't, don't like what happened there. I feel like white's quite a bit better now. Ah, but here he allows for allows d5. So that's how that happened. Now, what, was there another way of playing this with, um, you know, just bishops? Oh, can't play bishops before. Okay, maybe just doubling on the file. Maybe just doubling on the file. I, I, there's something funny. He managed to let black get d5 in. Now is that a good move or not? Is the question. Okay, so so black is thinking. Um, I don't know if anybody has an opinion about this. I don't understand. I guess the idea is if knight takes, there's a pin with knight e3 or knight b6. Uh, if knight e3, you have rook c d7. If knight b6, how about knight b6? At least that stops rook d7. Knight b6. Does anybody say anything? I'm, I'm hopelessly slow. That would threaten the knight three times, right? So what am I missing, everybody? I'm missing something obvious, I'm sure. Oh, it's not pinned. Excuse me. The bishop on f6 protects the rook on d8. Sorry, folks. <laughs> Sorry, folks. Okay, so uh, knight b6 certainly does not work. My fault. Okay, so what does white do here? It doesn't look like there's anything special, does it? Black's freed his game. He's ready to play rook d7, um, doubling, doubling on the file. And white is not moving quickly, which indicates maybe white didn't have much of a plan here. Uh, this is um, Dre, of course, who's a fantastic player, but maybe he underestimated this position a little bit. Maybe just rook, rook d2 or something. There's a lot to think about here because there's moves like knight f4, which threatens. Uh, well, there's rook d7 first. I think that would be the idea. And then, but but white has to keep his eye on moves like knight f4 also. Ooh, look at that. Okay, interesting move. Now knight f4 again, but this time would allow, I guess, knight e4. So knight f4, bishop moves to where? f3, no, no, but then knight d6, knight d3 is too strong. So, okay, so we're looking to move knight f4. How does white make that? Hmm. I suppose just bishop f1 is possible. I'm starting to like black, no, then, the, then the rooks can double. So I'm not sure what I'm missing there, but it looks it looks like there's some uh, possibilities for black here. But clearly he didn't play knight to two without calculating knight f4. I'd be a little worried. Anyway, but he's thinking, so it must not be that obvious. All right, let's check out another game. We don't get too stuck here. We've got... Uh, which direction are we going in? We've got uh, the Knights Tango game again. What happened with that game? Oh, quite a lot has happened with that game. We haven't looked at this much at all. Keaton would uh, be mad at me for, for skipping so many moves. I've got to move more quickly, don't I? I now realize that. Okay, so let's go back a few moves to can catch up on what's happened here a little bit. Um, okay, we had a basic uh, Queen's Gambit kind of position like this. And somehow black... Okay, white broke with e4 and got a big space advantage. So superficially, white's much better here, but black has managed to simplify a little bit. I would say that uh, white still has the advantage. He has pressure on the c file, he has more space, but you know, maybe it's just a game. Be interesting to see. There's no time to work out all the details here, is there? So you never know what's going on. Okay, here's uh, Mikhailovsky again versus Hilby. And um, with that Benoni, so let's take a quick look at that because we were having fun with that. Oh, so the idea was e4, okay. Uh, bishop d3, I mentioned either bishop f3 or bishop d3, and there goes e4, okay. And he takes. Now, I don't like the knight on d7 here, so I think this is a good plan for white um, to at least try. And now what, doubling or something? Oh, we're at, the, we're at this point, okay. I would think doubling rooks would be very, very, very natural at this point unless there's a trick that I'm not seeing. I guess you could argue that rook e7 can be answered by rook f7, so it's not that big a deal. But any time that knight's coming to e4 and then either g5 or d6, uh, you tend to prefer white in these positions. I'd be, a little, I'd be a little scared here. On the other hand, you know, the d5 pawn can be weak. If the rook starts straying, there's queen d4 check, could be a move. 
So maybe black, maybe black's okay here, but my, my instinct is that, you know, white's got much better development and has a little bit of an attack. And, um, so I don't know what other people think about that. Okay. Anyway, moving on, we have um, the Grandmaster, the Georgian President, versus, versus uh, Michael, who's doing brilliantly in this tournament so far. Wow, look at this. This has gotten complicated. Let's go back a few minutes. Whoa, this is the one where white gave up the pawn, uh, black gave up the pawn early on. We saw it after a3. Okay, rook b8. Uh, and black broke in the center. White drove black back. White took another pawn. Now white's two pawns up temporarily, but c5 is hanging and e5 is hanging. So, sorry, went the wrong way. So he just decided to defend e5. So, so white is still a pawn ahead here. And makes this amazing move because the knight on e5 is hanging. So you can't just take that knight. Now the other knight comes in to a great square on a5, apparently. This is the position right now. So maybe he's thinking about knight a5, maybe he's thinking about knight d4, but, but at least black's at the point where he can think about knight takes b6 simply winning a pawn. In fact, my guess is white's going to play it safe here and just play knight takes d7, or at least maybe either now or one move later. Why not? He's a pawn out. I think Michael might have just wondered that pawn, right? Does everybody agree with that? It seems uh, seems not like not like a terrific idea. Surface leading 5.5, 2.5. Yeah, it was 3, 1, and 2.5, 1.5. Yes, exactly. So it's 5.5, 2.5. And how are we doing this round in general? This game I don't like because he's pawned down. I don't like the surfers there. How are we doing here? This game is the one with, um, uh, oh. I don't like the surfers here particularly either. I kind of like white here, but maybe maybe he can hang on here. I'm not thrilled with this. I think white space advantage is significant here. So key, we're going to need that lead maybe. Now we have Dre, Dre versus uh, Mr. Knight's Tango Orloff. And how are we doing there? We've got, um, okay, nice advantage by Dreyf. Maybe not overwhelming, but let's look at the time. Yeah, he's even got a little bit of a time lead. This is going to be hard for black to defend. I really like the looks of this for white, just in principle, in practice. And it actually, even in theory, it's awfully, it's a very nice position. Uh, there's a little threat here of playing knight b5, and he stops that. Okay, that was a tricky little move. Okay, now Melik, we need him to do well too, right? So how are we doing there? The position is after queen e7. Okay, so he survived uh, the knight f4 anyway. Um, now how did, uh, how did that go? Knight e4, bishop f3, rook c d7 is certainly natural. But then knight e4, and he got back into the game. Okay, so maybe I was I was too worried about knight e3 kind of moves, or you're losing the e3 outpost. So the d3 outpost, excuse me. Okay. So White's managed to simplify here a little bit, and, and my worries with knight e d f4 are not not serious, I don't think. Um, okay, so he chases, gets the knight out of there. So I assume knight d3 is the most critical move, right? Might as well be aggressive and try to make some progress. It's hard to believe that white can get rid of that knight easily. Nope, he checks. Shows what I know. Strange idea. Yeah, so black is playing pretty conservatively here, I would say. Just trying to take some pieces off. And uh, this, this game right now is, seems about even. It seemed even for quite a while. Um, so that would, be, that would be interesting to see what happens there. Maybe there's an issue of time there. Yeah, black is short of time. That might be important. So uh, Melik's got a big time advantage there. So that might be nice. So maybe things aren't going so badly, Keaton. The first couple I wasn't so thrilled with, but these last ones I'm, we're doing pretty well here. OK. Okay, so this has changed dramatically. Queen uh, b6. So let's go back. So he did play. He did double, and he did play for rook e7. And he did play rook f7, and then white sneaks in with that move, threatening to win the d-pawn. Queen takes d6, and also queen d8 is kind of an issue. I just don't like these positions, and this is looking worse all the time. I guess queen f8 could be played, but then queen a7, no. Queen c7 followed by rook e7. It's scary. There's even f5 ideas. At least he doesn't have knight e4 to attack d6 and g5, because we can exchange that. 
So is Queen F8 playable? It was a question here. Let's see what we're talking here. Um, crazy things. Watch my video, please. Well, a little advertisement here. President Marge using all the time. Oh, should we go and see that? Okay, let's go back to President Marge. Um, here he is. And that game is... Uh, oh, you're right, 155, even though he has an extra pawn. You, you think he just tried to play this like technique. So he did play the knight a5 idea, and then he didn't simply take on d7, which is what I thought he did. He played um, knight, let's see, he played knight a5. Oh, he played, took the rook first. Okay, so there's a funny little order there. But anyway, we get to this position. I still think white's just a pawn up. I, I don't know if you agree, Keaton, but the clock is just terrible. 155, all the pieces are still on the board. Okay, that hits e2. Threatens bishop takes e2. I don't know if it does much else. Um, yeah, tough one. Maybe you can consider, well, I don't know. Black's pretty tied down here. But, as you say, the clock is in our favor, so the main thing is to make a move and force white to make progress, right? Force white to do so. I might even like make an escape square here, or h6 or something. I think. I don't think there's any threats, direct threats. Now maybe e, maybe white's thinking about e4, trying to crash, the open, open, open some lines, but maybe you can't help that. This move f4, is that ever a move? Probably nothing special. If nothing else is knight c4. So I, would, I think I'd make an escape square and try, and try and win on time. I mean, time is the big thing here. So I think that um, Michael should be moving more quickly, if possible, and exploit his time advantage, unless he has something really clever he's looking at. OK, so has black responded here yet? Yeah, queen f8. He played the move I thought. That was queen f8. Then b4. OK, so white had nothing very direct here. It would be interesting to look at the engine there. I thought white was quite better. But he decides to play it positionally. Okay, now he's attacking the d6 pawn, but it's protected for the moment. I think partly what's going on here is also a time thing. White's just trying to make good, logical moves and keep a little bit of pressure on, based on his space advantage. But now we have what? Rook is rook, no, he can never play rook e8. Queen c8, no. Oh, I see, it's, it's hard. Black doesn't have much space. Yeah, this game we're not maybe real thrilled with. Does knight h5 do anything? No. There's no direct threats that I see. Unfortunately, you can't play bishop e8, f7 because of rook e6. Well, rook e8 is played. How interesting. So he's going to... That actually makes sense. If, if, if white takes that pawn, black will get in on the dark squares. So white should probably move the rook off the file, is my guess. Yeah, good move. And now thinking about f5, but mostly just, just making a good fast move of the rook. There's no real threats now in the e-file for uh, whites in the hole. Why not keep the rooks on for black? Why not keep the rooks on until later? I like that move, rook f1. Okay. But at least we have a little time advantage there. Okay, folks. Um, yeah, what's this rook e3? Okay, so he's going to double after queen d4. He's simply going to play... Uh, he's got to be careful. If he plays queen e7, there might be knight d1 winning material. Is that right? No, because then there's rook e1. Um, knight e4 is what you have to think of. That doesn't work. So what about queen e7? For some reason, he's not playing that. Is there a tactic? He does play it. Okay. And knight d1 is followed by rook e1, so that should be fine. I think. So maybe a move like king h2? King f2. Oh, oh, look at that. I missed that. And so did uh, so did Craig, I think. <laughs> well, just goes to show. Keaton, I think this is trouble. Might have to sack the exchange here and hope for the best. Rook takes bishop f5. Try to get a little pressure on the d5 square. Ouch. So simple, right? You probably saw that. I, did, I didn't see that one. Yeah. Well, rook takes. I mean, black's got a lot of good squares in this position, so play it quickly and just and force white to uh, win. Play bishop f5, play queen c7, hitting the a pawn and working on the c file. Something like that. But uh, not what we wanted. Not what we wanted. Well, he hasn't resigned, has he? You're saying he played well, but they're still in the game, aren't they? Oh, I don't believe it. No, they are still playing. 
The clock seemed to be frozen. Okay, interesting idea. He's just he's uh, decided to attack this way. That's probably a better way to play it. Well done, better than what I suggested. Okay. Anyway, Mikulovsky still seems better, but let's just see. Let's see what happens. Look, H4 looks interesting here. Wow. There's some squares hanging here. There's also Queen D7, but then there's F5, I guess, right? So maybe just Rook H4. I don't know, I'm blocking some shots here, especially in time trouble, right? Yeah, I mean, you don't give up yet. Obviously, we're not happy, but, but it's worth trying. Um, okay, what, what else do we do here? We have um, Malik again, and that game is now doing what? White's trying to press a little. White's putting an h6 check. Uh, the material is even. My guess is this is just probably a drawn game with care. Not because of the opposite colors, but just because neither side has a real attacking position where the opposite colors might really help them. Looks to me very, very even. I would think the move h6 would be pretty good here. Or any move of the bishop, now that I think about it, because f7 is covered. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry, not any move, because e5 is covered. Okay, rook a6. A little bit odd, because it was so, so nice to have f7 covered. How about g4? I wonder if g4 can be played here. Wow. Um, well, let me see. Bishop c6 keeps you a pawn up, but I guess black has plenty of play. Bishop c4 is better, yeah. Wow, look at this. This is going crazy. Oh, oh, black has no time left. Did anybody see that? Did anybody mention that? Black is out of time here. How did that happen? Oh, that's sad. Oh, my God. That's terrible. Oh, he definitely played a good game and got an even game, and nothing was happening, but uh, you can't play the clock that way. We have to expect White to win this game just because of the clock, right? Oh, scary. Anybody got an idea there? What happened there? But it's good for us anyway, right? So Two Nights Tango is having a tough tournament. Really tough time. But it's kind of sad that Black lost that way. But on the other hand, it's good for us as a San Diego Surfer fans. As the official broadcast station of the San Diego Surfers, we're, we're happy, right? Just Queen F5 or something? Oh, he's working out all the details. Oh, the rook's hanging, I see. I'm, uh, good, good point. Rook's hanging on D2. Well, what do you think? So, so this is, uh, the match is going very, very well. I do feel sorry for Black there, because Black played perfectly well and had a completely equal game and got into trouble. Um, so, but that's fine, right? Now, what do we have left? What, am I, what are we missing? The two tangos game, we are still, oh boy, in a bunch of complications. Let's go back and look at that for a second. Let's go back a few moves. Wow. Boy, all kinds of things happened here. This is a case where uh, Keaton is going to criticize me for stupidly not following the games. Forgetting, I forgot about this game completely. Sorry about that. Well, this is fascinating. So we saw this kind of position. We saw this exact position, actually. And White's way of breaking through was simply f4, f5, f6. That looks awfully strong. It looks incredibly strong. I'd be surprised here if... Um, wow. What game are we looking at here, by the way? We're looking at um, Knight's Tango here. I'm sorry, I got mixed up by the last game. Okay. Uh, so White's broken through it, and he's only he's one pawn down, but gee, what a horrible... Well, actually, is he two pawns down? He's two pawns down, but look at the um, attack that White has. Knight f4, h5. Look at all those squares. Uh, it just looks like this ought to work. Ouch. Well, he's defending as hard as he can. Okay. Whoa, interesting. Interesting. One idea is uh, queen takes, knight takes, and if knight d7, rook takes d7. But there's still, but this still may not be totally clear. Let's see. Knight plays knight h7. No, he plays rook d6. And if worse comes to worse, white can take the b pawn exactly. So now white's only one pawn down and has tons of squares. But you have the feeling white should have done better here. Should have somehow gotten more than this. Does everybody agree with that? Something went wrong here. Uh, 
Okay, and so th this was the end here? Oh no, the game's still going on. Okay, so there are sort of some mating ideas here involving Rook H7 and Rook G7. So maybe Black's messed up again, but it's not that clear. I don't know if that helped to put the knight back. I was thinking of Rook G6. Uh-oh, so what's going on now? Okay, so Dreyev is threatening moves like, now knight f5 has become a huge threat. Knight f5 would win massive material, right? So I think uh, I think black made a big mistake with knight g6. Of course, he has no time left. Okay, so white's going to win this game. Look at the time, folks. Ouch. Ouch, ouch, ouch. So now maybe knight h5 or something. Oh, okay, 96, interesting. Wait, isn't that mate? That's mate. Okay, so he followed the mate. Yeah, so... Nice Tango is having a bad turn. <laughs> He's 0-3 now. So, um, that's great for the for the good guys, right? So we won that game. Uh, a round that was looking shaky is now looking, obviously, very, very good, because uh, Malik won also, right? And... Uh, and, and look at this. Black won this game, too. Oh, my God, look at that. Look how that turned around. We thought that White was winning. Uh, we thought that White was winning this game, but that attack with Rook H3 turned out to work. Okay, let's look at what happened here. Rook H4, that's the move I mentioned. Bishop there covering the light squares. Wow, that exposes the king really badly. I'm really surprised you ran into this. Maybe you had no time left. This is crazy. Wow. Amazing. Did we make a sweep of that round? Is it, what is this? Is that, is that like a sweep of the whole round for, for, uh, for San Diego? Am I crazy or am I getting something wrong here? I think we just won the whole round, didn't we? Oh, no, except for, I'm sorry, not Mark Vella. Mark Vella. Wait a minute. What's going on here? Did he fall on time? For some reason it says 1-0, right? Why does this say 1-0? Does anybody understand this? Okay, I'm having trouble with this. What, what? My board says rook g4 check 1-0. Anybody understand that? Did black actually win this game? Yeah, I don't understand this. I don't, uh, can someone clarify this? The result is giving us one out here. Anyway, I, I, this is maybe I'm new to chess.com, I'm new to this tournament, so I'm not real sure if I'm misinterpreting something here, but it looks, and the, obviously the clock didn't fall, look at the times, the times were okay, so it wasn't a clock issue. But um, I think, I think black, Black probably won this. I mean, surely this is a winning. This is a win. The question is, why would they say one? Well, maybe it's just the wrong mistake. No, I won. There we go. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Oh, good. The round is over. Yeah. Okay. I thought it was over, Keaton, but I was worried about this game where you see the li the result listed there has uh, has uh, Craig losing, but he actually won in this last position. Well, that was a crazy sacrifice. Probably totally on sound, right? Craig, you missed King F2, right? Admit it, Craig, you missed King F2. <laughs> but who cares? You won, right? Did you? If, if you intentionally sacrificed uh, by allowing that, I, I'll... I'll uh... <laughs> That'd be pretty crazy. Yeah. But you won. That's what counts. In fact, I didn't even see that Bishop H3 was going to give you that much play. I don't think it does give you enough play, do you? You don't really believe that, right? I think I think it must still be good for white, but um, but it's hard, right? In practice, it's hard to hold these to to cover all these to these kinds of positions. So yeah, the computer would have, Magnus would have beaten you, I think, but it happens. <laughs> okay. Well, I missed it too. I was looking at other moves for white actually. I thought white was better almost all game. Uh, after knight d7 and uh, after the rooks got doubled. That was very dangerous. 
and uh, so I think I think at that point it was looking pretty bad. But you defended very well. I mean, just the fact that he had to get to that position where you played clean e7 and, and the rook got trapped was uh, was a good defense by you. I thought excellent defense because I thought White had a lot of threats and you countered most of them. But of course, we're just looking at it in blitz terms. We don't have an analytical engine, so we don't we don't know we don't really know what's going on. But under pressure, that seemed like awfully good defense to me. And you did a great job. Okay, folks, maybe a little break here. Let me get rid of these games. One more round, and uh, San Diego just won the whole match. Amazing. With a 3-1. Yeah, there's no way they can catch that. We're way too far ahead. A 4-0 win will be okay. But, Craig, don't lose anyway. <laughs> yeah, the whole queen b6, queen f8, yeah. Then he played that b4 move. I mean, it came out okay, but you felt like you might have something better. Oh, bishop a6. We, I didn't see that. Yeah, just with the simple pin. Good, good point. Oh, thank you, Greg. Thanks so much. And uh, don't don't let up in the next round. We need some more points uh, for our tie breaks when, we, when we're playing, uh, you know, the last round of the year. Uh, <laughs> so, so don't go crazy. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to take a real quick break, and I'll be back. The games will be starting pretty quickly. God, this is torture. Back again, and we're looking at uh, Michael playing Mikhailovsky. Let's take a look at that one first. It's a standard bishop f4. Oh, it's a Schlechter. Wait a minute, what is this? What, what exactly is the order here? We have uh, a Grunfeld with bishop f4. Okay, sorry. Just a normal Grunfeld with bishop f4, rook c1. A c5 is also played. It should be six queen b3. I'm already out of theory. I don't know. I don't know this theory. C5 is played in every Grunfeld with bishop f4, so I guess it's time to play it now. And uh, you bet your booties, these guys both know this position, and I don't. So I'm not going to say anything dumb. White simply developing. Uh, normally, as if you get c5 and d5 in, and it's your move, it's kind of good for black. But in this case, I guess c takes d4 can be answered by knight takes d4. So maybe it's not as easy as, it, as sometimes. It, maybe maybe this is not completely freeing for black. You'd think normally this would be a completely free game at this point. And b7 is still hanging, so you know maybe something's going on there. Okay, next game we have um, Knight's Tango. He's 0-3. See what happens here versus uh, Malik. Um, okay, so it's uh, another Sicilian, another Rossellino kind of position, and um, Malik is defending fairly standard position so white's going to break with d4 
And even though you think you wouldn't want to open the position against the with the two bishops, uh, against the two bishops, if you have the two knights, notice white has two knights and black has two bishops, but actually opening the position tends to be good in a lot of two knights position because you have a lean development because you're able to establish either an outpost or a superior pawn structure. So if white wins the center here with d4, he'll stand slightly better. Now, on the other hand, black does have the bishops. So if black can just sort of stabilize things, even if white has more space, uh, black will be perfectly happy. That's kind of the, the trade-off here. But white should open the position. If white just sits on a position like this, it always turns out better for black. So this is a good plan. At least this is what white should be doing, whether it gives him an advantage or not. Um, okay, now we have two more games that are worth looking at. We have Craig versus uh, the, uh, the president. How's the president? How are we doing here? Oh my god, he's going crazy. He's playing the, um, the Miles defense, the St. George. This has actually been played quite a bit. Knight e2, very safe, and then c3. So Craig's playing very safely here. He's not going for the usual knight f3 stuff. Uh, b4. Yeah, I think I think uh, this is. There's no way that Black can become better in a position like this. I think our San Diego friend Cyrus Lactawalla has written about this this kind of position. Oh, that's all we have so far. I think uh, I'm surprised White doesn't just move quickly here and just develop the pieces. So um, okay, good enough of that. And now we have. Um, oh, and we just saw this one. What am I missing? I'm missing one game, right? Knight's Tango versus Malik. Okay, we just looked at that. And what's happening there is after d4, capture and play knight d7, and oddly enough, white plays d takes e. That strikes me as an odd move because it frees this bishop. So there has to be some concrete reason for playing that. Uh, I don't know. Usually, I would think just knight c3 in a position like this. It's just completely normal. I have no idea why he would play so radically with d takes e5. Maybe there's some positional point. It's true that that's isolated, but that, that really never hurts black in this kind of position. It's because he has the b file, and he has, he has plenty of sort of dynamic play. Uh, there's something I'm not seeing here, but I don't understand d takes e5, but you know, maybe there's some reason for it. Black took with a knight. Yeah, and this is just positionally very normal. It looks like black has this weakness here, but it turns out with the two bishops, this is a standard Sicilian position that's about equal. I'm surprised black didn't take with a pawn, actually. That looked even better. Okay, so what, what's going on? Um, ah, black starts trying to attack. An interesting uh, switcheroo here. So Melek is going for some an, an initiative rather than just accepting a kind of equal ending kind of position. Melek's going for the kill here. So that's kind of cool. Uh, so what else do we have? Next we have, uh, we just looked at Michael's game. Well, we'll look at it again, but I want to get to the other games. I don't know why I'm missing them. There's Craig again. Uh, we have, okay, so they're just, uh, just playing very simply. This is one way for white to play, is not to worry about maintaining the center. Just take a Sicilian kind of position. I think it's usually better to keep the center, but this is very safe, and white's ahead in development, and uh, white should stand perfectly well. It's a nice looking Sicilian, I think. Uh, certainly not the most ambitious way to play. Usually you play for the big center against the a6, b5 stuff. We talk about that a lot in our book, Eric Schiller and I, in our um, Irregular Openings book, uh, Taming the Wild Chess Openings, and, and earlier books we wrote too. We talk about a6 and b5 quite a bit. Okay, so we, I'm missing one game. What am I not looking at? We got Craig, Michael, Melick. Where's my other game? Uh, something wrong here? Wait, folks. Something wrong here? Hello, chat people. Anybody who's left in the chat, could you tell me what I'm missing? Um, Michael. The Dreyev game. I'm missing the Dreyev game. Is there a Grandmaster drawer or something? Why am I missing this? Give me a second. Uh, I can't find the Dreyev game. Okay. I just don't see it. Interestingly, the, on the list, I don't see it either. I wonder if there was a, a draw. They don't even allow it. Do they allow a draw before the match start, before the game starts or something? That would be funny. Click his name and view game, but I can't click his name, right? Because it's not on here. 
It's not on my list. Hang on. Where do I find his name? How do I do that? Um, I guess I could search. Eric, you got any? Uh, King, can you tell me? Find my friends. Okay, that's a good idea. Oh, excellent idea. Click on iGrok. View game, I guess, right? Uh, is this it? Yes, it is. Excellent. Okay, I don't know how that happened, but we'll we'll take it. We're not going to argue with that one. It wasn't listed in the events list, and it wasn't automatically put on my list. So, okay, good. Let's just go down through this real quickly. We have um, uh, Drave is a, a big expert in the Caracan. Played his whole life, written about it extensively. Huge expert in the Caracan. One of the world's top experts, actually. Oh, interesting now, he doesn't play the uh, knight d7 move. You all know that. In the old days, we all pl automatically played knight d7 to avoid uh, knight e5. But um, now they allow knight e5 sometimes. Well, often, actually. So it's a slightly irregular way to play. Um, so this is Bruce Tylan playing white. I'm sorry, yeah, playing white. Okay, so these are sort of normal Carol Canish looking moves. It's probably even a book line. He has to take that because of the A pawn hanging. That's why he took that, uh, that's why he played um, Queen Takes. And that makes me think structurally that Black's just fine here. He's got a relatively bad bishop compared to this bishop. And it just seems like a normal position. The, the pawn in h5 can even be weak in an ending. I doubt if it's strong in an ending. So my guess is that Black's completely equal here. Maybe not better, but completely equal. Okay, so interesting. He keeps him with the bad bishop. It's still a bad bishop because of that pawn there. And uh, I think I think Black's going to try and win this end game. I wouldn't be surprised. Because these pawns really are not really great for the end game. They're not terrible because you've got some space, but they're they're potentially vulnerable. You know, rook c4, that kind of move. So I'm not thrilled with how White played this at all. Um, not a, not not a bit here, but that's okay. So what are we doing now? We're playing, uh, looking at some other games. Two nice tango game. Wow, look at that. Okay, so we just saw that queen g6 move. And white responded to that with um, king h2 and getting his last piece out. Now bishop d3 is an idea. But, but Okay, white, white forces exchange with that bishop. That's probably good for white to have gotten rid of the, the bishop pair. Now, since the queen on g6 isn't doing that much, I wonder if white isn't better. Although it's got to be very minor. Let's look at the specifics here. Oh, interesting. Okay, very interesting. He's trying to get to the d2 square for his rook. So that explains why he allowed that whole knight c4 thing. Now black doubles. And he's thinking. So black's thinking here. Okay. So Melik's thinking against Orloff. He just, uh, he, he's thinking about doubling rooks, but there's queen takes c6 at this point. So there's also rook takes e4 to think about. Uh, when there's a little fork that kills you, isn't it? Because because uh, queen takes, well, that's a little hard to say. No, actually, maybe rook takes e4 is playable. No, I guess it isn't, because queen takes, queen takes, rook takes, and then, oh, wait a minute. Isn't that just better for white? Well, it's, but it's not necessarily winning for white. Okay, so maybe this is equal. That's what he's calculating. I would think white would have a slight advantage in this position, but maybe it's not enough to make any difference. Oh yeah, I guess not, because because the pawns are shattered. Maybe a5 now is an idea. Sort of tie down those pawns on the queen side. Otherwise, rook a6 is a thought, isn't it? I guess it's probably just another drawn end game. All these, all these rook endings end, end up being drawn, don't they? Wow, nice tango. Sure moved quickly. 12.45. He's only used two minutes. a5, good. Yeah, I think that's the right way. Because except for that, without that move, I would think white was better. But now, black's kind of got everything under control. He's got rook b8 possibilities. He's got a4 possibilities. So this is a little different. Now white's... Mediocre pawn structure in the center doesn't help him. 
Okay, this is very interesting. I don't know what how this works at this point. Probably just start bringing the king to the center. Right? So this is interesting. Let's move, look at another game. My guess is that's about equal. It's probably going to be drawn. But who knows? Endings are tricky. Okay, now we have... What do we have here? Oh yeah, the game that I said I thought that black might be trying to win. Uh, and black is taking quite a bit of time on this move. Oh, no wonder. Very committal move, d4. Probably can't hurt. I feel like black's the only one playing for a win in this position. But whether d4... d4 was obviously a huge positional decision. Maybe the idea is to get a rook to d5 and start maneuvering it around, and then maybe eventually a knight to d5. Uh, interesting move, d4. And an ambitious move. Okay, so that's um, that's the uh, Malik game there. Whoops, we, we're just looking at the Drev game. Uh, Drev is black. And I should have two more. Michael's game against Mikulewski. Had, a lot's happened, but it's not that many moves, actually. We were looking at it after, uh, right there. D takes C5, we hadn't looked at that. Black thinks about knight E4 now, or possibly queen C5, probably knight E4. Queen B5, standard idea. <coughs> oh, God, who knows what's going on here. Okay. So, um, Sidney are using a little bit of time. Black especially is using quite a bit of time. <coughs> and uh, Keaton noticed this the other, in another game that he'd used quite a bit of time. So, oh no, I'm sorry, that was the Georgian, that was the president. So I don't know if Mikulewski often uses a lot of time or not, but he certainly has here, considering that it should be a fairly standard set of moves. I don't know what's happening. Does anybody know what's happening? I, I find this sort of thing impossible to really know. There's some knight h4 possibility. Right now knight c6 is a nice move to make. <coughs> and black can't play knight c6 because knight takes b4 because the queen takes a5. <clears throat> so what should black do here is the next question. And as usual, I have no idea. Whew. Very hard to tell. I don't know if anybody has any ideas here. Oh, if he has to take that, that's probably a pretty good sign. Now, someone has to tell me why he can't play C takes B5 with what look like wonderful pawns, because he's still a pawn up. White's still a pawn up here, right? Or am I wrong? Yeah, white's still a pawn up. So at the very least, he can sort of simplify and get some squares on the queen side. Yeah, I mean, to me, C takes B5 seems probably right. Yeah, there we go. So I don't think, uh, if anybody, I think white's probably better here, although it's, you know, it's a game. Let's look at um, Craig's game. Where do we leave that? Oh, we got almost to that. We're way happening there. So let's go way back here. This is that St. George's opening. And we got a very Sicilian, very Sicilian-like position. And white just attacks like crazy. Now, I'm almost surprised you didn't let him take on e3. You know, move like queen h5 or queen g4, but... Okay, so now queen g4. Whoa, now there were sacrifices uh, kind of lurking in this kind of position. But I guess not, not playable yet, I guess. Interesting. Very interesting. Okay. So again, all tactics. Who knows how to play positions like this? This is just pure chess skill and without much time. Pure intuition, how this goes. Okay, so the d4 knight is hanging. White has mating ideas with a queen move to the h file. Could try even queen h4 right now. Is that right? And then that could be answered by h5, I suppose. It could be answered by queen g7, but that looks wrong. So probably h5. Um, what else can white do? White can play knight back to f3 and try to get it to e5, but for one thing, knight f4 threatens knight e2 check, so some, somehow we're losing the initiative here if we start retreating our knights. So somehow the queen h4 move looks like the most natural one. Um, black seems to be okay here. Maybe queen h4 followed by uh, rook a3 to f3 or something like that, or rook a3, just to cover a lot of good squares. Okay. So now probably h5. I can't imagine trying to defend any other way here. And then maybe rook a3 might be an idea. Let's bring another piece into the attack. I think everything's covered. 
course, you have to calculate knight f4, but yeah, actually knight f4 is a <laughs> pretty scary. You, you, you might want to play something like knight e6 followed by rook g3, and then look at that g6 square. Uh, but that, that may not work. Okay, so the problem with a 3 might be knight f4. Knight f4 is kind of a threat now, because it threatens queen takes d4 and threatens knight takes g2. Um, wild stuff. Oh, he tried rook a3. Okay, cool. I'm kind of glad. It's the last attacking piece. It makes a lot of sense to bring it in. The problem is what happens on knight f4. You feel like white should have something after knight f4. Oh, queen f4. I thought of that, too. That's a possibility. Oh, uh, you could play rook h3, but that's pretty pathetic. Yeah, I might have to play rook h3 here. Maybe that's not so bad, though. The rook looks odd over there, but actually has some, some, some point. It looks like queen takes, knight takes is very risky. But you could do that. You could play queen takes, knight takes, and... Well, let's see. And what? Let's just see. Oh my god. Oh, okay. So it's not made on it. It's not made on e2 or h3. It's kind of a funny little position. So that's cool. Okay, so he calculated this. Just just take the queens off and chase the knight back. So a possible the possible moves are what now? Just knight back to d5. Anyway, okay, we've gone far enough with this. It looks like a game. It's still even material, isn't it? Yeah, still even material. Just a lot of fun. A lot of crazy, uh, crazy position. Very hard to figure out what's going on. Uh, I guess a rook d8 move might be possible too. Some sort of rook d8 move might be a move here. Wow, amazing. Very interesting position. Okay, and then we have what that we haven't seen in a while? The Melik game. Oh my god, we haven't seen anything in a while. I did my bad mistake of looking for 2 1. Okay, um, oh, look at this. Okay, so look at how this end game developed. Okay. Black centralized, good move, rook a6 covering everything. Melek seems to be playing this very well. If anything, black has, seems to have more chances here. Whoa, okay, and that's a pass pawn. And that rook on h6 is looking pretty stranded if he tries to take on h6. Wow, I think black uh, all of a sudden has some chances here, don't you, Keaton? This looks serious. Unless I'm missing something, which I often am. Wow. So yeah, I don't know. He's going to have to play rook f8, I think, and try to get the rook back over again. Rook h8, but then king f7. Well, this is quite serious. Hard to believe rook h6 is good enough at this point. Amazing. Wouldn't this be something? Knight's Tango loses a fourth game in a row, maybe. It's possible. Wow, and that ending, which was clearly not a problem for White at all. Ouch. I think you have to try something like Rook H8, and then when the king comes back, get to the E-file. Check until you get to the E-file, and then come back behind the pawn. I think that's the only way to get out of this. Anyway, we'll continue, but that's that game has developed amazingly rapidly. Then we have um, Craig's game. Oh, we just looked at that. So we've, we've looked plenty at that one. So let's look at um, uh, Michael's game we looked at. We haven't looked at this game for a while. We haven't looked at the Dreyev game. Okay, so um, looks to me like White came out okay here. I was a little worried about White's position, but it seems like he did a pretty good job of breaking up that center. You wonder about d4. I, well, you know, easy to say once, once you see what happened. d4 is a hugely committal move. But uh, somehow white manages to break up the pawns. Now, obviously, black's still going to be better here, but not so easy here, is it? I mean, this is now white's bishop has some effect, and if d4, there are plenty of, um, you know, black just play, white just plays bishop e1. The squares are pretty well covered. I have a feeling that black's chances are not as good as they were a second ago. So I would say that's, that's heading more, that's more like an equality kind of game. And what have I not tried here recently? Um, okay, that's the Dreef game. Here's the Melik game. Oh, let's just see how he did that. He did take. He dared to take. And for some reason, he didn't play King F. I thought King F6 was the idea. Oh, I see Rook down. Okay, so maybe I was over-optimistic for, um, 
for black. White did manage to get behind here. Oh, my fault. Okay, folks, this just shows that I was being way too superficial. There was also no rook f6 move, apparently, either. Okay, so now, now I, you have to reconsider, because that pawn is not queening very quickly, and white's going to have big things happening on the queen side. So rook h6 was playable, after all. That's, that's odd. I didn't realize. If he has to play king e5, that's not a good sign. I thought the whole idea was king f6. Okay, I guess, I guess, I guess, okay, so I totally miscalculated that. All right, what else do we have here? We have uh, Hilby versus Margrella, okay. Oh yeah, so that went kind of the way we th sort of thought. Rook fd8, that's kind of what we figured might happen. Now knight df3, why not? And the knight comes to d3. And the rook comes to d1, attacking it for a third time. So now one thing black can do is just bring his knight back to c5 or something. Ooh. Yeah, it almost seems like black's getting a little bit of initiative here. That bishop on the long diagonal is looking pretty nice. Is he going to win control of the d-file? It looks kind of like he might win control of the d-file if he just moves his knight back. Is that right? Just something like knight c5? Oh, he's looking at knight b2. He's probably looking at knight b2 and, and then worrying about all these knight um, rook b3 ideas. Like takes takes rook b3, and then the check. No, but then check and rook takes b1. Oh, I see. This is another big mess. Rook d1, that's a very daring move. Wow. Well, I'm, I'm going to refuse to uh, calculate this. Ah, oh, Joshua Sheng is going to play next week. That's terrific. Hi, Joshua. Oh, that'll be fun. Okay, and, and the surfers will be 1-0 and going into week two, so that'll be cool. Uh, by the way, how, how's our basic thing standing here? How are we doing overall here? We're, uh, this game I'm a little worried about. The Mikhailovsky game... I'm sorry, this is the Mikhailovsky game. No, it isn't. The, the Mikhailovsky game is... Whoa, okay, that's the game we haven't looked at in a while. Let's go back there. Boy, they're playing slowly in this game. They haven't made that many moves. Okay, so there was the takes, 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 takes. Wow, interesting. Now white is a full pawn up here. So you would think that just bishop e3. No, why not? You'd think that this would be just a great position. Maybe bishop e3, knight takes c5, takes and d4. That's probably the problem. Okay. Okay. Could be the Zol book or something. Uh, I don't know if I'm mistaken here, but white is a pawn up. I kind of like pawns. I'm not sure why pawns are bad here. Okay, so here's our position. And black has very little time. We're ahead of them on time. Neither side has made many moves, all things considered. We're only on move 16 and they're both running out of time. I better start hurrying with the other games because we're starting to have time issues, aren't we? This is the point where I need to hurry with the other games. What's going on here? Look if they check. Oh. <laughs> Uh, he's going to have to move that b-pawn now, right? He's going to have to play a3 or something? I'll try not to allow rook f6, I guess. Okay, folks, <laughs> that's not, that's not, I'm not going to make a mistake that I've done before and go too far. Let's look at this. Okay, here's the drive game again, because everybody's getting in time trouble now, so we have to, I have to move faster, much faster. What is going on here? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Pawn on d3 looks pretty good, but white's managed to sort of break through on that side of the board. I think white's still got this under control. I think we're, we're talking about a kind of equality here, unless there's some tricks that I'm not seeing. This could get tricky, though. It's kind of a funny position. It looks like there might be little, some little tactics in it. That's the drive game. We have one more we haven't looked at in a while, uh, which is what the tango No, we just looked at the tango game. Uh, the Mikulevsky game we just looked at, and amazing. Okay, finally something's happening here. B4. Okay, am I just right here that uh, Michael Brown has 
Uh, did I count wrong? No, he's got eight pawns. The other guy has seven. It just looks fine to me. Nice pawn mass on the queen side, all kinds of tricks over there. I would have thought f4 or something, but there's nothing wrong with g4. f4 seemed more natural somehow. Oh, he's just making moves now. Oh, they're worried about time, I think. Okay, white's moving quickly and naturally. The idea is just to save some time. So it looks to me like, yeah, 96 is a nice looking move. But it doesn't really threaten anything, does it? Because the pawn on d4 is covered. And so now maybe white just has to make a nice neutral move, a nice slow move. Uh, double rooks, maybe. Rook d2 or something. Yeah, well, black just maximized uh, the positions of his pieces, but I still don't think he's threatening much. Maybe he's threatening bishop g7 followed by a bunch of takes in f5. But I think you've got time to meet that. Maybe he's looking at, um, maybe Michael's looking at trying to grab, grab a pawn or something. Doesn't seem likely. Now I would think just double or make some kind of fairly slow move. Oh, okay. I'm not sure what that does. It gets a rook out, but I don't know where it's going. There's the bishop. So now he's got to be a little careful about a couple of captures followed by, by f5, I think. So this is the time to do something. Now rook he one I don't understand. I don't know what he's doing. I think he's losing the thread a little bit, maybe. So what now? Bishop f1 or something? Yeah, no, this move, this move f5 is becoming an issue, isn't it? And he didn't get the um, bishop on f2 out of the way either. Yeah, I think he's sort of running out of ideas here. I think you just need to make a move here. Uh-oh. I don't think you can be accurate here. You just have to make a move. Just let him take. You just got to do it. Huh. Yeah, he really wishes he'd played bishop uh, f1 and 92 earlier if he was going to do this, because this is a very negative retreat. However, it's good. At least it protects against the fork. Now, the only good thing here is that he uh, didn't lose he didn't lose all his time. He's just even on time now, roughly even on time. Okay, moving on. We have um, um, this game uh, with Craig, and and he did take knight takes b2, but not immediately. Okay, so we, we left it at, uh, oh, we left it a ways back here. This is the problem, these games go quickly. Next week I've got to remember that when the time gets short, I start speeding up. Okay, rook fd8 we saw. We saw knight d3, we saw that, we saw rook d1. Okay, he didn't play, he played knight back. This is clever, because if knight takes, there's a mate on the last rank. Okay, everything's covered, and now he's threatening knight takes b2. Why knight c3? Because of knight. Wasn't knight e1 check a threat here? Oh, I see. Oh, yeah. Knight e1 check, the, the knight, the rook on d1 is hanging. Okay, so it's a trick. Rook d2, king f1, knight b2. Uh oh. So black's just a pawn up for nothing, it looks like. Two pawns up. <laughs> Temporarily two pawns up. He's going to get one back. White's going to get one back. This is extremely hard to win, fortunately. Four against three with two, with nine. a night ending. How's the time doing? Ah, oh, good. Black's running out of time, even though Black has the better game. Now they have to just play every move instantly. Black should be trying to gain two seconds every move on an increment, or one second or something. Yeah, this is very hard to win anyway, and he's got no time. So... I think he's thinking about f4. Oh, okay. Oof, that took his time on that. Okay, so should we watch the time scramble, or should we go to another game? Oh, we'll watch the time scramble, I guess. Well, actually, there's 1 minute and 15 seconds left for Michael, uh, for Craig. Oh, now we can start checking, maybe. Yeah, 97. That's okay, yeah. The night c4 check doesn't mean anything. Wow, Black's going to either lose on time or draw. In my opinion, there's not going to be a win here for Black. And he's going very slowly. So 
for is knight f8 uh, too, too ambitious? Maybe knight f8 is just too ambitious, and you shouldn't risk it. Ooh, interesting. Another problem, though, is knight c4 check and f4? I wonder what happened there. Oh, h4. Oh, oh my god. Oh, that's even better. Yeah, I think this g4 move was very problematic. So he wants to bring his knight back to g4 to stop the pawn. Fourteen seconds left. This is getting really exciting, folks. How's he gonna stop the king from coming in? He's got he's got to stop the pawn somehow. Three. It's the only the only even try. Oh, that helped. Okay. Good because this all oh, the weight. He's got the two second increment. I was gonna say he went on time. Yeah, white white when he, white's g4 just ended up really bad here, didn't it? Just play g5 followed by knight f7. Or this one. No, this one doesn't work. Ooh, black totally messed it up. And is forfeiting. <laughs> oh, look at this. A little clever. But he gets back to f2 with the knight, right? So how does this work? Has anybody calculated this? Knight back, draw. Wow, what a finish. What a finish. What a great game. Fun game, huh? I don't know if anybody's listening anymore, but that was a great, great, great game. Okay, so um, what else we got going here? Okay, knight d5 check. Let's see what happens there. Let's go back some moves. Okay, so this is we saw this. We saw him breaking with g5. So we basically saw this kind of position. Ooh, black won another pawn. Did he? No. And is this just a forced win? This is just a forced win. So he probably resigned here, right? Oh, amazing, okay. Because uh, Black's taking the pieces off and winning with the outside best pawn. Ouch. Well, that was too simple. I don't know how it finished, but that was too simple. So that, um, so that's a case where uh, uh, Drev won another game. Wow. Drev won almost all his games, it looks like. So there's an awful lot of wins here. I'm getting tired, folks. Okay, but this is interesting. So we have one decisive result there. We have a decisive result here. Somehow Malik did win this game. Isn't that something? Okay, let's see how that finished. Boy, San Diego is just doing fantastically well. Whoa! Whatever happened to A3 and B4? I guess White was trying to win this. Maybe White was trying to win this. Oh, 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 awful, 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 awful. Awful, 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 awful. Yeah, that was just a time trouble thing. That was just a thing where people were moving too quickly. So San Diego won another game. What was going on here? San Diego won, Grave won, Melik won, Mikulewski, okay, so Michael lost, Mikulewski won, and there was a draw. So San Diego won two and a half, a half. And the match won 11 to 5. There it is. Um, Keaton just said, we won the round two and a half, a half, one and a half, and an 11 to 5 final. Fantastic. Thank you, everybody. And uh, I'm glad there's nothing else because I'm getting really tired. But those were fun games. They're the fun time, time scrambles at the end there. I guess, I guess we're going to have to get used to this every week. A lot of these games are just decided in the time scramble. That Melik ending was really strange. Um, but uh, okay. Terrific. So we will see you guys next week, I hope. Anybody who's watching, and tell your friends about it, and tell them, tell them to come and get on. Check out the San Diego Surfer site for the link. We, uh, we had some problems with the link this week. We'll try and get it right next week. Uh, you can always go at the last minute. You can go to the Surfer site and then go uh, uh, on the link from there to get to the broadcast from there. So that will always work. You can always go to the San Diego live stream, basically, to get the, uh, to get the link. 
and we'll try to set it up beforehand, but from with a scheduled link. Okay. okay. Thank you, everybody, and uh, see you next. Uh, well, when would it be? I guess next week, right? Okay. Bye bye. <laughs>